Good morning, everyone, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this uh, public hearing of the Committee on uh, Labor and Human Resources Development is now a call to order. We'd like to put on record that uh, this public hearing will uh, delve on Senate Resolution Number 243 on the reported presence of uh, alleged illegal Chinese workers in Clark, Pampanga, and other parts of the country, and Senate Bill Number 1508 mandating the requisite proportion of Filipino lab laborers to foreign workers, Senate Resolution Number 946 on social dumping and the plight of 22 Filipino truck drivers rescued, apprehended in uh, Badborg, Denmark. Also included in the agenda is uh, Senate Resolution Number 752 introduced by uh, Senator De Lima on the influx of Chinese nationals in the country. This uh, public hearing is uh, being conducted jointly with the Committees on Justice and Human Rights and the uh, Committee on uh, Foreign Relations. At this juncture, let me uh, um, recognize our guests and resource persons. We uh, go for, from uh, the Department of uh, Labor and Employment, Yusek uh, Siriaco Lagunzad, sir, good morning. Of course, uh, from um, the Department of Foreign Affairs, Office of the uh, Undersecretary for Migrant Workers Affairs, Yusek Saralu Ariola. Um, from um, OWA, Deputy Administrator uh, Dulay is here, sir. From uh, POEA, Deputy Administrator uh, Villamor uh, Plan. From Bureau of Local Employment, uh, the Department of Labor and Employment, Director Niki Tutai. The uh, Assistant Vice President of uh, Clark Development Corporation, Ms. Uh, Thelma Ocampo, ma'am, morning. Senior Manager of the Offshore Gaming and Licensing uh, Department of PAGCOR, Attorney Jessa Fernandez, morning. OIC Senior Deputy Administrator from CESA, Mr. Raimundo Roquero. Hi, sir. Deputy Director General from PESA, Ms. Mary Harriet uh, Abordo. Abordo. Hi, ma'am. Good morning. From the Bureau of Immigration, Chief Prosecution and Legal Assistance, Attorney Homer Arellano. He's here. Oh, Homer. Sa inyo po lahat, muli, uh, magandang umaga. Let me... Uh, give uh, the chair's uh, opening uh, remarks. Again, as mentioned earlier, we are all here today because of uh, very important and urgent matters, the influx and uh, illegal deployment of Chinese nationals in the country. And perhaps we should not be just uh, talking about uh, Chinese nationals, but other, nas other foreign uh, illegal workers na nandito po sa ating bansa. But before I continue, may I uh, recognize uh, my uh, long-time partner in the House of Representatives and now here in the Senate from Makbayan, Senator uh, Risa Ondiveros. Ma'am, thank you for uh, being here. As I uh, mentioned earlier, um, we wanted to talk about the influx and the illegal deployment of uh, foreign nationals here in the country and the illegal uh, alteration of contract of Filipino truck drivers in Europe which is a clear case of social dumping, where workers are exploited as cheap labor. These are interrelated issues that must be urgently addressed. Magkaugnay po itong dalawang uh, usapin nito. Ang dami po natin mga kababayan na naghahanap ng trabaho sa abroad at pagpunta naman nila doon, naabuso naman sila. Habang may trabaho naman pala dito mismo sa atin na tila napapamigay sa ibang mga nationals o dayuan. Kung naalala po ninyo, noong December 7, uh, 2016, ay inimbestigahan po ng committee ito ang ginawang pag-aresto sa 1,240 Chinese nationals na illegal na nagtatrabaho sa Next Games, sa isang gambling operator sa Fontana Technology Innovation Center sa Clark, Pampanga. As a result of our initial consideration of uh, Senate Resolution 243 and our participation in the hearings conducted, by the Blue Ribbon Committee, headed by Senator Gordon. We have filed a bill on July 25, 2017, mandating requisite proportion of Filipinos to foreign laborers. 
The incidence of illegal foreign workers entering our special economic zones revealed the grave disproportionality of Chinese workers to Filipino workers. And for this reason, we want to amend the Labor Code through Senate Bill 1508, which is also part of today's agenda, to compel Filipino employers to ensure that at least 80% of their collective workforce are Filipino citizens. Na-arresto po at nakadetain naka ngayon yung guest po natin noon na uh, Deputy uh, 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 Commissioner ng Immigration, uh, si uh, Mr. Argosino, dahil sa 50 million bribe kay Jack Lang, pero hindi po maare-aresto yung uh, pagdagsa ng mga illegal workers, even illegal Chinese workers na hanggang ngayon ay narito sa ating bansa. So I think it's about time to put in place protective measures to ensure that Filipino workers are prioritized in their own country and will always have a fighting chance in this age of rapidly shrinking global economy. Kailangan po natin ang ganitong batas dahil hindi po dapat ninanakawa ng trabaho ang ating mga manggagawa. During the budget deliberations, we requested data from the Department of Labor and Employment as to the official number of foreign nationals with Alien Employment Permit or AEP. We received your communication dated October 1, 2018. That as of that date, from 2015 to 2017, there were 115,652 AEPs that were issued by Dole. Ulitin ko, 115,652. Halos kalahati po nito of 51,980 AEPs ang na-issue sa mga Chinese nationals. Nakakalama po dahil pag tinignan natin yung kasaysayan, yung historical background, nasa 24,000 na po out of the 52,000 AEPs ay na-issue for just one year noong 2017. Gusto po nating laruhin yan kung bakit may immigration surge o may sudden influx ng Chinese nationals sa atin. At huwag po tayong lumayo para humanap pa ng ebidensya. Ako mismo, personal kong na-experience dito sa may MOA, uh, kumain po ako isang gabi dyan sa kabab. Sarap po yung kabab. Lalo na paglilagyan nyo ng cheese. At meron kayong uh, sour cream nut at yung uh, garlic sauce. Eh pagpunta ko ho doon, akala ko nasa China na ho ako. Hindi ko ho talaga. I mean, I will challenge all of you today. At sasamahan ko po kayo sa mga lugar na ito. Sasamahan ko po kayo sa ilang mga condominiums. Mamaya, iisa-isayin ko po. At... Uh, para lang ipakita na talagang dumadagsa na ang napakaraming... Uh, and I don't, I, I don't want to single out Chinese nationals, even foreign uh, nationals. No? Not just in the gaming industry. Nandyan po sa restaurants, nandyan po sa construction, nandyan po sa mining, etc. Kahit po dyan sa ASEAN City, dyan sa City of Dreams, at sa mga nakahilerang condominium sa paligid, ang dami mo natin makikita mga banyaga, lalo na po at angat na angat yung mga Chinese nationals na makikita po diyan. Kasi yan po yung ginagamit na accommodation ng mga Pogo o Philippine Online Gambling Operations employees na karamihan po ay Chinese nationals at nasa mga balita na nga po, nasa 200,000 na daw po ang narito sa NCR. E pagka umikot ka dito sa NCR, dun sa BGC, sa Eastwood, kung saan-saan, eh tingin ko, oh, hindi lang 200,000. Sa dami po nila, hindi lang trabaho ang inaagaw sa mga Pilipino, pati po mga tirahan. Nakita po natin yung nag-viral na post sa FB kung saan naghahanap ang isang real estate agent ng 400 condo units sa Muntinlupa para sa 3,000 Chinese employees. Dito po sa Bay Area, Ang residential rental rates, umakyat na po ng 62.2% sa unang anim na buwan ng 2018 kumpara noong nakaraang taon dahil na rin po sa Chinese market. This is according to property firm Santos Knight Frank. Kaya gusto po natin alamin kung pasok din ba sa charter ng PAGCOR ang pag-authorize o pag-accredit ng special class of BPOs affected by the POGOS na nag operate ngayon sa bansa. Wala naman po tayong problema kung legal sila. Ayon po sa Bureau of Immigration, 3.12 million Chinese citizens ang pumasok sa Pilipinas from 2016 to present. Yung mga turista, negosyante mula sa China, dagsa na po. Okay naman po yun. Pero wag naman po pati mga workers o trabahante mula sa China na aagaw 
sa trabaho na dapat nakalaan sa ating mga kababayang Pilipino. Ang masakla po, para na po tayong sirang plaka. And uh, let me recognize uh, Senator Nancy Binay na lagi yung present dito sa ating uh, mga pagdinig dito sa Committee on Labor. Perfect attendance po siya. At kami po, para na po kaming sirang plaka ni Senator Nancy na paulit-ulit nating hinihiling na aksyonan ng gobyerno ang pagdagsa ng mga illegal workers dito sa ating bansa. Kahit sa budget hearing po ng Committee on Finance, I would like to remind the Department of Labor and Employment, ni-raise din po natin ito, kasama si Senator Drillon, reminded again our officials doon po sa Committee on Finance na to act on this matter, but it seems that the situation is only getting worse. Magbabangkit po ako ng ilang mga insidente. Noon pong nakaraang linggo, November 22, 2018, mayroon po ulit na arrest ng 93 illegal Chinese workers sa isang online gaming sa Pasig City. 93 illegal Chinese workers. Last September 6, 2018, may 34 Chinese nationals ang huli sa aktong nagtatrabaho sa construction site na malapit Bujan. Kapitbahay natin sa SM MOA sa may uh, Diosdado Makapagal Avenue. After Labor Day, May 2, 2018, may isang waitress po sa barangay Tambo dito sa Paranaque ang ginulpi ng Chinese chef na si Wang Yongbin dahil tumikim po ng chicharon ang kababayan natin. Samantalang ito pong si Chinese chef na nambugbog ay eh walang mapakitang working visa ni walang mapakitang passport. Noong isang taon, May 23, 2017, may siyam na Chinese nationals at isang Indonesian ang nahuling nag-ooperate ng dredging vessel at naghahakot naman ng lahar at black sand doon po sa Makolkol River sa San Felipe, Sambales, kahit walang kaukulang mga permit. Isipin niyo po, ang adult joblessness natin increased to 22% or equivalent to 9.8 million adults in September of this year. Tapos mapapanood po natin sa TV, maririnig natin sa radyo kung paano ang isang kababayan natin ay nasuspindi sa trabaho niya sa isang Chinese restaurant dito mismo sa ating bansa kung saan ang mga staff ay Chinese nationals na ultimo ang cashier ay isang Chinese national. Alam natin illegal sila dahil ang alien employment permits po ay ini-issue lamang para sa mga trabaho hindi kayang gampanan ng kapwa natin Pilipino. Diinan ko lang po, sobra-sobrang pangaabuso na ang dinaranas ng pagtatrabaho sa ibang bansa ng ating mga kababayan. Hindi po lingid sa kaalaman natin yan. Pero pati ba naman po dito sa sarili nating bansa, papayag pa rin tayong maapi ng mga dayuhan. Iririmind ko po at babanggitin itong 1987 Constitution natin. It's very clear. Article 2, Section 12. The state, and I quote, the state shall promote the preferential use of Filipino labor and adopt measures that help make them competitive. Kahit makailang raid pa po tayo ng marami pang illegal foreign workers, kung hindi naman po mareresolba ng proper government agencies, ang animoy pagdagsa nila sa bansa sa mga illegal na paraan, magpapaikot-ikot lang po tayo dito. And how can we not urge our government agencies to act fast and not turn a blind eye To this issue. It hits me that it's not all ironic that while we are allowing the illegal deployment of foreign nationals as workers in the Philippines, our own people are forced to leave their families and work abroad to be victimized by fraudulent posting in Padborg, Denmark, for example, and elsewhere in the world. That is why we included Senate Resolution Number 946 in our agenda today to seek probe on social dumping and the plight of Philippines. 22 Filipino truck drivers in Denmark. Tingnan po ninyo, dahil sa kaluwagan natin, sa pagpapatuloy ng mga iba't ibang, iba pang mga banyagang nationals na magtrabaho dito sa ating bansa illegally, ang mga kababayan natin ay napipilitang iwan ang kanilang tahanan at isinusugal ang buhay at kaligtasan sa ibang bansa para lamang kumita. Niloloko po sila doon at walang magawa ang ating mga kababayan. Kailangan po ang kagyat na pagtugon dito. Dahil nitong mga nakalipas na buwan, nag-anunsyo po ang bansang Poland na bukas itong tumanggap ng mga manggagawa mula sa Pilipinas kung saan mahigit 100,000 Filipino workers ang kailangan nila dahil sa labor shortage doon. Ngayon pa lang po, 
Sana gawin na po natin ang lahat para hindi mabiktima ng social jumping, dumping ang ating mga kababayang magtutungo sa Poland at iba pang mga OFW market sa Europa. It is national abasement that many of our OFWs were promised better opportunities, but instead, they were grossly underpaid, maltreated, and abused. They are left without any choice because they cannot find any opportunity for dignity at home, besieged by poverty and foreign incursion. I believe that what we are doing here today is consistent with taking more aggressive measures to protect and advance the interests of our people and our friendly partnership and alliance with China. I believe that these measures will help ensure that our people will find adequate jobs at home instead of being exposed to abuses abroad. More so, the issues that we will tackle today pertain not only close but directly within our very stomach. It is about economics. It is about livelihood. It is about food. It is about our OFWs, about our labor force. It is about security at home. It is about love of self, of family, and of country. If you bother to notice, please. Malinaw po na inaagawa ng hanap buhay at ikabubuhay ng mga illegal foreign workers na nasa bansa ngayon ang mga kapwa natin Pilipino sa sarili nating bayan. Trabaho na sana ay papawi sa kanilang gutom at magtatawid sa kanilang pang-araw-araw na pangangailangan kung kaya't na itataboy at napipilitan silang magpaalipin sa ibang bansa. Tungkulin po natin bilang mga Pilipino na pangalagaan ang ating kalayaan, ang bayan, ang buhay at hanap buhay ng mga Pilipino para si kabubuti natin ngayon at sa hinaharap. Muli maraming salamat po. And at this juncture, let me uh, also uh, give the floor to my uh, colleagues. Sige po, at this juncture, let's uh, give the floor. Total, uh, bigyan natin uh, yung DOLE and uh, uh, DFA and perhaps uh, um, the Bureau of Immigration to uh, make their opening statements. Please, uh, Yusek Lagunsad. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I wish to read a statement, a one-page statement. Honorable Chair of the Committee of Labor, Employment, and Human Resources, Development, Senator Joel Villanueva, uh, Senator uh, Maria Lourdes Nancy Binay, Senator Risa Ontiveros, Chairs of the Committee on Justice and Human Rights and Foreign Relations, on behalf of Secretary Silvestre H. Value III, who is currently attending the ASEAN Labor Minister's meeting, uh, good morning. Thank you for uh, giving the Department of Labor and Employment the opportunity to apprise these committees on the employment of foreign nationals in the country. Several laws govern the entry as well as employment of foreign nationals in the country. For one is the 44-year-old Labor Code of the Philippines, which the department is under obligation to implement and enforce. Article 40 thereof provides that any foreign national seeking admission to the Philippines for employment purposes and any domestic or foreign employer who desires to engage a foreign national for employment in a country shall obtain an alien employment permit or AEP from the Department of Labor and Employment. The Labor Code of the Philippines further prescribes that an AEP is issued after determination of the non-availability of Filipinos who are competent, able, and willing at the time of application to perform the services for which the foreign national is desired. The labor market test is conducted through the publication in newspaper of general circulation with the name of the foreign national, the position, a brief description of functions, qualifications, the employer and address are published. As such, a Filipino worker who is competent, able, and willing to take the job may file an objection to the concerned dole 
regional office within 30 days after publication of the application has been the prevailing labor market test for years. Your Honors, the Department would like to share in the spirit of transparency to these committees and the public in general that the period 2015 to 17, that though regional offices issued a total of, and this was mentioned earlier, 115,652 alien employment permits or an annual average of 38,550 permits. For the first semester of this year, some 21,320 AEPs were issued. We observed that there is indeed an upward trend uh, in the issuance of AEPs. The department therefore welcomes the inquiry in aid of legislation. We trust that this will seek to clarify and define the respective mandates of several government agencies involved in the entry and employment of foreign nationals in order to craft a comprehensive proposed legislation to ensure that jobs in the country are by and large for Filipino workers. Maraming salamat po at magandang umaga sa atin lahat. Thank you, Yusek Lagunsad. We go with Yusek Ariola, ma'am, you're recognized. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Senator Binay, Senator Antiveros, good morning. Um, thank you very much for allowing the DFA to shed light on the Senate Rule Solution 946. Um, we just like to tell this honorable committee that this does not only involve one country, Denmark. In fact, we have four posts in Europe that are involved now in trying to look at this case. Warsaw, Poland, Hague, Netherlands, Oslo, Norway, because it has jurisdiction over Copenhagen, Denmark, and Berlin, Germany. Um, actually, uh, we have discovered that this might involve around 500 Filipino truck drivers all over Europe. Uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll be giving you, Your Honors, a, a summary of what we have because we've been uh, trying to, to gather all the Victimized facts. Victimized po yan ng uh, social dumping? Actually, Your Honor, the thing is, uh, most of them were recruited here in the Philippines by United Prime Mover. It's a POEA license. So it's uh, the same, the same company that uh, is involved with, uh, with, with, with that one in uh, Denmark? Yes, Your Honor, but some of them came from Saudi Arabia. So um, they were all over the place. Uh, um, if I may, Your Honor, uh, United Prime Mover sends the drivers to its partner agency in Poland, HBT International Transport, a Polish company, which in turn fills them to other truck driving companies in Europe, notably Kurt Bayer in Padberg, Denmark, Andersen Eurohandel in Warsaw, Poland, Hochmann Logistics, which is a Dutch company operating in Netherlands. The drivers are legally working in Denmark, um, so we, it's not a police case. The police have visited the company but has not found anything illegal so far. The Filipinos don't want to go home. We have tried to talk to them, but they prefer to talk to the unions who are <coughs> renegotiating their contracts. They would like to stay and continue working. They are asking assistance to have decent living conditions or to have the terms of their employment renegotiated. A conservative estimate of how many Filipino truck drivers in Europe are similarly situated could easily come up to at least 500, considering their spread all over Europe and the route that they're taking um, takes them all over Spain, Italy, Norway, Germany, Belgium, the Netherlands, Sweden, and Denmark from Poland. The truck depots are located in Kozalin, Poland, in Padborg, Denmark, and in Ense, Germany. Um, in a telephone conversation made to the Philippine ambassador to Norway, uh, Ambassador Garcia, on November 1, Kurt Bayer representatives confirmed that the company would like to settle the matter with the foreign truck drivers. It is interested in cooperating with the embassy in resolving the issue so that the drivers may continue working in the company. On the NGO side, your honors, the Danish Center Against Human Trafficking as well as the Danish Truck Union are helping the Philippine government and then the embassy and labor officials to negotiate the best possible terms for the Filipino truck drivers. Um, we are still having to determine if the, they are trafficked, but as of now, your honors, uh, we have a situation wherein uh, we are still trying to find where, where the 
are all are the contracts are for the amount that they signed in is um very properly paid but the conditions are very appalling um because they live in very not very in subhuman conditions but i think not all you said not all are, are getting paid the same amount that they yes because in. uh the ones from eastern europe are getting more than the amount that they that being paid for filipinos uh in cases from if the Filipinos are getting 1,060 euros, the, the other Europeans are getting 1,600. Uh, this is also very alarming to us because of the numbers. And um, most of them, since the company is Polish, um, they were to told that the living standards, with the living standards in Poland, the, the 1,060 euros is enough. But then if you're transferred to Denmark with a higher living condition, um, then the, the money is not enough. However, your honors, we've been trying to tell them that we are ready to repatriate them, but no one is uh, willing to, to return to the Philippines. And they are listening more to the trade union and they, because they just want to renegotiate their contracts. Thank you, Your Honor. Yes, Senator Nancy. Mr. Chair, may move you to suspend the deployment for drivers Actually, in Poland? Actually, that's what we want to, uh, we are um, recommending to POEA, prime movers. But the problem, if from Manila, from the Philippines, I think it can be suspended. Our problem is some of them are recruiting from the Middle East. And they're promising... But these are Filipinos. Filipinos huh? this, these mm -hmm. are Filipinos, Your Honor. You say, me, uh, I wanted to ask questions later, but uh, total pinag-uusapan na rin. Yung, yung, yung binabanggit nyo kanina, yung sinainan nila, 1,000 something euros. Pero, for example, if they are in Denmark, yung loss doon mas mataas, di ba? Sa yes, the, the cost of living is very mm -hmm. high. So, doon sila hinar, but then, because they're mobile, at nandun sila nagpunta ng Poland, Iba na yung, uh, they, iba ba yung rates? They were hired in Poland and they stayed there for a week or two. Then afterwards, they were transferred to Denmark. Okay. So, um, Denmark is very, very expensive compared mm -hmm. to Poland. So, that's why they're having a hard time. However, 1,060 euros is still a big amount in Philippine terms. Yeah. So, that's why they, they're staying there. But what makes uh, it difficult is because some Eastern Europeans are getting 1,600 euros. So that's, uh, they're ge getting a very low rate compared to their counterparts in Europe. We're, we're surprised, uh, you made mention about 500 Filipino truck drivers. Um, ko lang ho narinig yan. But there is a report also, sa, sa Denmark, according to Danish uh, news agency, may 200 po doon na Filipino truck drivers. I don't know how accurate uh, is the figure. But then, you say, ang, ang isang challenging sa atin is, how do you monitor them if they're truck drivers, they're moving all, uh, I mean, all over, di ba? Yes, Sir Honor, and the difficulty is, there are some in NZ Ger Germany, there are some in Hague, the Netherlands, and uh, some are also in Berlin. So, uh, and we are suspecting that there are some people who are also, some truck drivers are also stationed in some parts of Europe because they keep on uh, moving around. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Um, balik, balik na lang namin. Um, because we have the BI. Para let's, let's ask the Bureau of uh, Immigration muna. Sige, Sir Attorney uh, Arellano, you recognize? Hi. Uh, yes, Sir Honor. Um, Your Honor, on behalf of the Commissioner of Immigration, um, regarding the... Uh, we're just going to give an update, Your Honor, since the 2016 hearing... Um, the Bureau of Immigration has been intensifying its drive against uh, illegal, uh, illegal foreigners working in the Philippines, Your Honor. And um, as of, and for this year alone, Your Honor, we have uh, charged uh, 218 Chinese illegally working, and we have so far 218. Deported. Yes, Your Honor. This year, Your Honor, and we have deport deported around 170, Your Honor. And uh, most of them are engaged in uh, cyber fraud or they are uh, illegally working in retail, retail trade, Your Honor. Meron po sa ibang industry like mining, construction, 
Um, for this year, Your Honor, uh, none, Your Honor. Mr. Chair, na babalik lang sa ng DFA because um, because yung mga Chinese visitors ba natin? Do they get a visa from our embassy in China? May may ganong proseso ba? Yeah. Sa DFA, uh, yung embassy natin or um, consulate or... Usually, they, to, to be able to enter the Philippines, they have uh, usually tourist visas, Your Honor. Because yeah, we... Pero they don't need to get a visa from our embassy to enter the Philippines. Depending on what... De depending, ano Your Honor, on, ano on what... Ano sila or working? Hindi nga, pero kasi di ba yung may, may proseso bago sila makapasok dito eh. Uh, whether tourist or whether work permit. Unang-una, kung work permit, kung wala pa sila nakukuha ng work permit dito, dapat sa airport pa lang, di na sila nakakapasok dahil hindi sila nakaka... Dahil wala silang ganung visa. So, everything is done sa embassy natin. So, I assume DFA would know the process. Um... Your Honor, visa free ba sila? Uh, Your Honor, I know in Macau they process a lot of uh, tourist visas for uh, for Chinese. Okay, so uh, yung Chinese ba or do they enter our country na hindi kailangan ng visa? Visa free? Or do we have that uh, arrangement with China? Uh, Your Honor, uh, Chinese the Chinese from. Mainland, uh, they have to get an entry visa from our embassy or consulate in China. So. Which means sh DFA should have the data. Kung ilang yung nag-a-apply sa kanila na Chinese uh, visitors, whether work, mag whether eventually mag-work sila. Um, siguro, can we just get that data from DFA? Kung ilan na yung na-process ng uh, embassy natin uh, na visitors from China. Yeah, thank you, uh, Senator Nancy. Siguro let's 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 start the ball rolling. No, dito muna sa sa mga illegal workers na nandito sa bansa, particularly yung maraming mga Chinese nationals o foreigners na nagtatrabaho sa atin. Ilan ba talaga dito yung uh, illegal? Ilan yung legal? Kasi kung meron ng 218 illegal uh, uh, na na nakinasuhan na ng uh, BI 170 ang na deport. Ano ba yung universe nito? Masusukat ba natin yung uh, illegal? Uh, meron ba tayong idea? Baka mahirap sabihin natin, hindi natin alam. Pero ilan yung pumapasok, no? Uh, kung may legal, uh, unang tanong is, uh, ito ba ay uh, hindi kayang gampanan ng kababayan natin yung trabahong uh, ibibigay sa kanila? Kaya ibinibigay sa mga banyaga? Ngayon, kung uh, hindi nga kaya, ang next question naman, bakit hindi kaya, bakit hindi kaya hasain natin ang ating mga kababayan na gawin itong uh, trabahong ito? Uh, ulitin ko po, yung uh, sa ligang batas natin, sabi sa Article 12, Section 12 of our 87 Constitution, the state shall promote the preferential use of Filipino labor, domestic materials, and locally produced goods, and adapt measures that help them competitive. Kasi parang pag tinitignan po natin, uh, kanina nabanggit natin, cashier. Bakit kailangan Chinese national yung cashier? At may AEP sila. Yun ang claim nila. Dun sa ibang nauhuli naman, wala rin AEPs. So, to BI and the dole, base po sa datos ng uh, BI, and correct me if I'm wrong, 3.12 million Chinese citizens ang pumasok sa Pilipinas from 2016 to present. 3.12 million. Pero sabi po ng Dole kanina, there were 115,652 AEPs or Alien Employment Permits na in-issue from 2017. Base po sa sabi din nila, 51,980 AEPs ang ibinigay sa Chinese nationals. Ang gusto kong malaman, sigurado ba tayo dun sa 3.12 million Chinese workers na nandito, uh, Turista ba talaga sila? Kasi kung turista sila, mamaya ho, sa pagdinig natin, ang dami ho nating nakita, personal ko nakita, bumibili ng mga kondo, bumibili ng... At dito na ho, sasabi na dito sila nagtatrabaho. 
hindi mo naman sila matanong kung meron ba kayong AEPs. Kasi parang kulang pa nga din po itong mga mga numero, numero na ito. No? Parang napakadali po sa isang uh, uh, turista ngayon ang uh, umupa ng kondo dito sa MOA o sa Entertainment City at parang napakadali para sa kanila na magkaroon ng trabaho. For example, yung binabanggit kanina ni uh, namin, pinag-uusapan ni Senator Nancy, dito sa Makati. Um, for example, yung equitable uh, building. Biglang may re-renta ng isang buong uh, isang buong floor ho doon. Tapos magdadala ng mga Chinese uh, tourists. Tapos doon na magtatrabaho. Mamamonitor ba natin yun? Tapos online gambling pala yung uh, gamit nila. Y yun, mga gusto ko nating uh, maliwanagan. No? Can, can we give a, a, an answer from uh, BI and Dolly on this uh, particular matter? Sir Chair, uh, sa, sa pangkalahatan po, ang patakaran ay uh, may preference sa uh, Filipinos as workers. That is the policy. But in actual operations, we have generally three types of uh, work permits. Merong special work permit, merong provisional work permit, at may alien employment permit. Pagka ho pinag-uusapan yung alien employment permit, ay <coughs> ang yung three types po na yan, sir, lahat siya pang banyaga? Opo. Uh, this governs the, the entry of uh, foreign uh, uh, workers. Uh, but a lot of them come in as tourists and later on convert their visas uh, for work. But in terms of the alien employment permit, <coughs> meron po yung tinatawag na 9G, this is a, a technical reference. It's called Pre-Arranged Employee Commercial Visa. Ito po yung typically ang nabibigyan ng mga alien employment permit. Yun pong mga manggagawa na highly specialized, technical, supervi supervisorial, at saka managerial. Okay, sir, but let me just clarify. When you talk about AEPs, alien employment permits, only DOLE, Opo. exclusively DOLE ang nag issue po yan. Opo. Okay. And uh, the AEP is a requirement of the DOJ, the BI, for working visa. Yes. For them to issue In other words, visa. the AEP cannot stand on its own. It is processed by DOLE to determine the labor mar market test. The labor market test is simply, meron bang Pilipino na may kakayahan na gumawa ng trabahong tatrabaho yung na pinopropose noong alien workers. So kung wala, at ito'y napapatunayan sa pamamagitan ng publication, uh, siguro'y kailangan improvein pa yun. Kasi... Ang, uh, I think natatama ko kayo, Yusey, kasi kung yung isang kababaya natin, parang... There's no way for him or her to know na may available jobs na na, na para sa kanya na na ibibigay pala sa iba, di ba? Opo. opo. Kanya po ang uh, ang bilin po sa akin ni Secretary Bellio ay gumawa pa ng ibang paraan para lalo pang malaman ng mga manggagawang Pilipino na merong available na trabaho. So, ilalagay namin sa website, yung aming IPS o Publication Service ay gagawa po ng paraan para nalaman ng lahat na mayroong available job at may pagkakataong mag-object yung mga Pilipinong may, may kakayahan. Ang isang halimbawa po niya nung uh, pumasok yung coach ng PB, uh, ng basketball na foreigner, nag-object yung Pilipino na coach at uh, nagkaroon ng decision in relation to the labor market test. So, yun po ang paraan para ipatupad yung patangaran ng preference sa Pilipino. Pagka po na-issue na yung AEP, uh, it, binibigay po ito ay sinasubmit sa immigration para sila po ay tuloy ang makapag-issue ng, ng work permit. So, maliban lang dito, lahat po ng iba pang special permit na tinatawag ay hindi po sa DOL. At ang pagkakaalam namin, pagka ang trabaho ay tatlong buwan at pwedeng ma-extend ng anim na buwan, ito po ay naiisyuhan ng special work permit. At hindi po dumadaan sa sa Department of Labor yun. But I, but I recall, uh, you said, no, and, and para hindi lang natin makalimutan, yung mga CESA, yung mga eco zones, uh, even in their charters, okay. if I'm not mistaken, 
it should be coordinated and certified by DOLE before they issue a working permit. Is that correct? There is uh, a coordination, but the, the original jurisdiction in terms of visa issuance is the Bureau of Immigration. So, so whether it's CESA, whether it's PAGCOR, in the end, uh, the, the oversight should be the, the Bureau of Immigration. Yes, that's visa. But yeah. when you talk about working permits, that's dole. Opo. At, uh, so my question lang, sir, is that are they coordinating with you? Because in the last hearing, I think December of 2017, this happened. Okay. Yung sa Clark uh, na nangyari, uh, yung mga nahuli doon, Seza yung nagbigay ng uh, working permits, tapos yung tinanong sa dole, wala din sa listahan ng dole. Mm -hmm. But ang worst part of it is that the uh, working permits were issued by CESA, but they are working in Clark. Doon naman sa Clark, ang uh, sabi, uh, if I recall it right, noon sa next games, if I'm not mistaken, uh, BPO company sila, hindi nila alam na nasa ibang uh, larangan na din sila at hindi nila na-check-check na. So this is, again, uh, to show yung uh, inefficiency of uh, coordination, no? uh, kitang-kita ko natin. I just hope na after what, two years now, nag-i-improve nag and what we can do about it. But uh, am I correct uh, in saying, uh, still, working permits, dapat merong listahan ng dole. Opo. Uh, kanya po sinabi ko na sa bandang huli, yung immigration ang pangunahing agency. Kasi kahit saan i-issue yung mga permits na yon at uh, ultimately, uh, uh, the decision ng immigration, pagka sinabing na-check ba ng dole yan at wala, ibabalik po sa amin yun. So, so that is the, the best way of Ganun making ba? sure that when it is uh, within the jurisdiction of dole, it will be referred to us. Pagka kasi three months, six months lang yan, hindi na ho dumadating sa amin. At uh, the moment it is beyond six months, the interpretation is that the labor market test has to come in. So, una, sir, gusto kong sabihin na you categorically admitted na pumapasok ko dito as tourist, mas marami ko yun, papasok na turista, maya-maya may working permit na maya-maya dito na nagtatrabaho. I think, kita na ho natin yun, no? But yung, yung sa BI, eh kung sasabihin lang po ng Bureau of Immigration, kasi may AEPs na or meron ng coordination with DOLE, yun na lang po ba yung tinitignan nyo to issue a working visa? Uh, Your Honor, um, there, are there are other factors, but the most, there are other factors, but the most important is the AEP, Your Honor. The AEPs? Yes, Your Honor. No, sir, uh, before the AEPs, kanina nabanggit ho, working permits being issued by, uh, by, uh, by uh, PESA, CESA, or ECOZONES. Um, yung iba po dito, nung sa huling pagdinig natin, hindi, hindi naman ini-issue na ng DOLE ng AEPs. Pero nagkakaroon din po ng working visa. Pa paano po yun? Uh, Your Honor, uh, regarding uh, working visa, we don't issue a working visa if there is no AEP, Your Honor. Ganun ba? Yes, Your Honor. Very <laughs> clear from, ano, from, uh, from our eco zones. Andito ang PESA, andito po ang CESA. Ma'am, if you want to, please, uh, Ma'am Abordo is uh, recognized. Yes, Your Honor, thank you very much. Uh, for this opportunity to explain um, the policy under PESA in regard to employment of foreign nationals. So, uh, Your Honor, there is a provision in our law which states that foreign nationals may be employed by PESA registered enterprises in their capacity as um, officers of the company. So specifically, president, vice president, treasurer, supervisory, technical, and uh, advisory. So um, we have uh, a memo of agreement with the Department of Justice and with the Bureau of Immigration. And uh, essentially, uh, PESA companies uh, go to our office. They file their application for a uh, 47A2 visa which is the visa that is provided in our law. And uh, we evaluate their um, applications. So the applications uh, essentially consist of an endorsement from Ms. the president. Sorry, Ms. Yes. Ano yung 47A2 visa? It's 
sa special multiple entry visa. And anong coverage nung, ng visa na to? Um, actually, it's uh, essentially it's an employment visa. So it allows the company to be employed in a PESA registered enterprise. So and you don't need to inform year. Dole that you issued a 47A2 visa. Uh, actually, I'm just uh, going to explain after it is processed by uh, our office, we endorse it to the Department of Justice. So it is the Department of Justice that actually uh, reviews and grants or approves the visa. So in the I, uh, DOJ pa rin po. I mean, hindi pesa. Hindi pesa. Um, I'd just like to explain Cagayan, Apeco, Clark, Subic, Freeport area, Bataan, Sambuanga economic zones are not under pesa. So, e separate na charter nila. Separate yeah. charter. Oh. But again, uh, talking about pesa, still, at the end of the day, it's the Bureau of Immigration, Department of Justice, that yes. gives working visa. Uh, it's uh, actually called a 47A2 visa, oh, so the only... It's a working visa, yeah. right? It's um, essentially a business uh, visa, so... And Mr. Chair, um, walang participation yung dole dito sa 47A2 visa. Uh, they are, the foreign nationals are also required to get an alien employment permit. Uh, so, so aside from the 47A2, they, they also need to apply AEP. Uh, in fact, before the Bureau of Immigration issues the visa itself after approval by the uh, Department of Justice, the AEP is required to be presented to the Bureau of Immigration before the visa is issued. And in PESA, it's still a requirement for alien employment permits. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. But c can we go to, before we go to, uh, to, to CESA and other uh, uh, SACLAG, etc., let me uh, just acknowledge the uh, presence of our uh, minority floor leader, also the one who uh, raised this issue of illegal uh, uh, Chinese uh, workers in the on, uh, uh, online gambling, uh, Senator uh, Frank Drilon, our minority floor leader. Sir, thank you for being here. Yes, uh, we go with CESA, uh, Mr. Roquero. Thank you, Mr. Ch <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chen. Uh, your Honors, uh, on behalf of uh, Secretary Raul Lambino, I am representing now the Cagayan Economics Authority. With respect to the, our foreign workers, at present we have a uh, offshore companies. These are all offshore companies who are... Uh, domiciled in uh, the Cagayan Economics Authority in Santa Ana, Cagayan. And at the moment, uh, we, we have a stringent uh, procedure in acquiring a working visa. Uh, there are 11 documents that you need to submit to CESA, and one of the most important documents that you have to submit is an AAP, an Alien Employment Permit. Okay, it's a <laughs> requirement. Yeah, yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you uh, very much. Uh, issued by the Department of Labor. And then uh, you need also to submit another requirement from the BID. This refers to the non-derogatory records of uh, the employee uh, before the, uh, including the official receipt, meaning that you have paid your uh, fees uh, from the BID. Then we process the working visa. And this will include a letter of request addressed to the administrator and the CEO, a certificate of non-availability of the position, a recruitment assistance form, an alien uh, in employment permit from uh, DOLE, a notarized uh, general application form being provided by CESA, a photocopy of the passport by page, a 9A visa page, a notarized employment contract, a notarized resume or personal data sheet of uh, the worker, a notarized affidavit of support, and then a Bureau of Immigration official receipt, meaning that you have already paid a copy, uh, the original passport and a processing fee that you have to pay to CESA before a working visa is uh, being given to the applicant. So meaning to say, Your Honor, uh, there are a lot of stages <laughs> that you have to pass. It through. looks stringent to me, sir. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. uh, ang ano ko lang, sir, yung AEPs, no? Uh, yun ang uh, key sa akin na uh, binanggit po ninyo na before you issue, alam ng Dole, dahil Dole issues AEPs, right? Yung last hearing po, December of 2017, I remember, yung mga nahuli pong illegal uh, Chinese workers dun sa Clark, ang uh, ilan po sa kanila ay uh, may CESA 
uh, may sa working visa. But then they are working at Clark. So ang next question ko, paano niyo na mo-monitor? Ito po, di ba, supposed to be dun lang sa inyong, uh, sa zone niyo lang po, sa Cagayan Economic Zone lang, dapat? Uh, well, by virtue of Executive uh, Order Number 13, wala na po kaming operation dito sa Metro Manila, sir. No? It's all uh, back in uh, the Cagayan uh, Economic Zone Authority in Santa Ana, Cagayan. And at the moment... Uh, so clearly, nalusutan po tayo na napunta doon sa Clark, doon nag uh, nagtatrabaho sila. We were okay. only in uh, CESA in the middle of uh, last year, sir. So that belongs to the previous administration. Yeah, thank you, sir, sir Roquero. Can we uh, uh, ask uh, Ms. Delma Ocampo yes, of um, Black Development Corporation? Apa, magandang umaga po. Uh, pareho po ng CESA, no, very stringent po ang pag, uh, process or pag endorse namin. Uh, of course, ang question na po ay kung prerequisite ang AEP. Opo, it's a prerequisite. Again, lahat po nagsasabi, uh, Department of Labor and Employment, na... na Ang AEPs ay uh, requirement and so sa inyo ho, nandun talaga yung yung uh, isang uh, matibay na katibayan na uh, bago mag-issue ng working permits eh, sa inyo po pero dun sa datos nyo 115,652 lamang yung na-issue uh, from 2015 to 2017 dun sa mga report sa Metro Manila alone 200,000 Chinese nationals working here so parang dun pa lang medyo nakakagimbal na po yung mga mga figures. Senator Binay. Siguro Mr. Uh, Chair, can we just, since sabanggit na yung nangyari sa Clark, can we just get an update kung ano na nangyari dun sa mga nahuling Chinese? Because if I remember it correctly, meron dun mga walang passport, yung iba walang permit, yung iba meron namang sa sa permit. Can we just get an update kung nasa na itong mga nahuling Chinese nationals? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, last December, uh, last November 2016, uh, the BI arrested around 1,400 uh, uh, illegal uh, Chinese uh, illegally working at Clark, Your Honor. And by January, by by March 2017, we we have deported most of them, Your Honor. So we are on the one hand of uh, some, of, we're still looking for some who managed to escape before, but majority, 95%, we have already deported, Your Honor. So they are now uh, in mainland China. Question ulit, no, sa BI at sa Dole. Kapag may pumasok po ba dito na negosyo, uh, tapos gusto nilang magdala, usually ba silang nagdadala ng sarili nilang uh, empleyado galing sa uh, kanilang uh, lugar o bansa na pinanggalingan, tapos Ano yung monitoring nito? Paano natin minomonitor ito? May mga reports ba kayo na natatanggap? Kaninong, kanino bang trabaho yung uh, pagmomonitor, yung pagbabantay ng pagpasok nila dito? Kasi inadmit na nga po natin, papasok sila dito as tourists, tapos maya-maya eh, may working visa na sila, dito na sila nagtatrabaho, maya-maya may condo units na sila, maya-maya nandito na sila, and maya-maya nakita natin yung cashier, yung trabaho na po pwede sa mga Pinoy, eh, Nanakaw na rin ang mga banyaga. Mr. Chair, can I? Please, please. Yusek, uh, uh, Lagun, sir. Sa pangkalahatan po, uh, para ma -i mabigyan ng background yung AEP, there are special visas that require AEP. Other than that, uh, those are special visas issued by, by the immigration. And these are the follow following. Uh, special Investors Residence Visa, Special Residents Retirees Visa, Treaty Traders Visa, and Special Non-Immigrant -immig Visa. Ito po yung 47A na nabanggit kanina. So sa lahat ng pagkakataon, kinakailangan ng Alien Employment Permit as a requirement for the BI to issue. So, can, can, can you repeat that? Uh, it is very important to me. Yes. Can we have that again? Uh, can okay. you repeat your statement? Uh, we'll check, uh, we, we will submit uh, this and then I will repeat it so that yeah. we can discuss. It says... Uh, you sec, you, uh, ang nag-i-issue ho niyan is BID, not In the end. In the end, yung pong AEP is just a requirement because the original jurisdiction is uh, the Bureau of Immigration. Dole uh, would just perform the labor market test. Uh, holders of other functional visas such as 
Special Investors Resident Visa, Special Resident Retirees Visa, Treaty Traders Visa, and the Special Non-Immigration Visa. This is the one referred to as 47A2. And to clarify about 47A2, uh, this is uh, a, a special uh, uh, provision of the Philippine Immigration Act of 1940 where the president uh, will, will allow non-immigrants, foreign nationals, who are coming for a temporary period only. Y yun po ang ano eh. Tapos, they, con they consequently paved the way for the creation of special visas. The investors of employees of PESA and BY registered companies kagaya ng oil drilling industries, sila po ang nagre-request na mag-issue mag ng ganitong visa. Usually, this is valid for the duration of the contract or for one year. And this is the dual part of it. 5% of the total workforce ang allocated lang po sa mga... Uh, po. Mr. Sorry. Chairman, yes. uh, uh, your with your indulgence, please, please. I am first reminded of the saying when you confront the Senate, Confuse the enemy. Na dami niyo pong sinasabi, hindi namin maintindihan kung alin yung hinahanap namin. Pwede bang gawin na natin simple? Dahil po, marami din gusto maintindihan kung ano ito. Oh, can you, in the simplest terms, and uh, can, can you describe to me, if I were an alien going to be employed in a online gambling operation in the Philippines, Ano po ang prosesong susundin ng online gambling operator para po makapag-employ ma ng isang uh, uh, foreigner? <coughs> and uh, let's put it uh, straight. Ano po ang sinusunod ng mga citizens of China para po makakuha ng employment permit? I don't care where they go. Basta, isa lang naman siguro, basta may... I, I want to know the process and the authority, uh, who would be the authority to issue until the end of the day when there is only one document that should be presented for to validate, the, to legalize the employment. Kung wala kang ganito, illegal ka. So, and what are the standards you follow? Can you describe that for the record so that we will understand it? You know, I was Secretary of Labor and I was Secretary of Justice. So from both ends, I have seen how, or I have already, I have seen, so I, I used past tense, because ngayon hindi ko na maintindihan eh. When I look at the, just look at, get a paper, one newspaper today, you will see several pages of uh, 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 notice that this missed, uh, publication, uh, you know, inviting uh, attention to some uh, aliens being employed. Now, I am confused, and I'm sure uh, the, the public is confused. Kayo lang ko nakakaintindi eh. Pakisabi lang sa amin in the simplest terms. What is the process followed? What agency is involved? What void final document is issued by what agency to authorize the employment of aliens? Pwede ho ba yun? Please, please. Uh, legal, legal process. I would describe the... Uh, the broad policy, and I will request uh, our expert to describe the details. But broadly, uh, Mr. Chairman, if the work is, is temporary... Again, uh, uh, simplify na natin. Yung okay. sample ni Senator Dillon, online gambling. Employer ako, kukuha ako ng, uh, ng uh, empleyado from uh, China. Anong gagawin ko? Ito po yung uh, Pogo. Yes, Pogo lang, Pogo. Pogo. Because Pogo lang, idabi ni ni. Sige Mag po. Muna, isali yung iba muna. At, uh, sige po. Sige. Ihingin ko si uh, Director. Is Director Tutay, you recognize. Papaliwanag yun po. Um, siguro po, uh, good morning po sa lahat, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, yun pong any foreign national na gusto pong mag-apply ng alien employment permit sa atin, regardless po yan kung yan ay pogo, construction, manufacturing, or all other industries. Pogo lang, pogo lang. Yan yung pag-usapan okay. natin. Never mind. Ah, specific example tayo, online gaming, okay, mag-hire ng uh, foreign national. Yun pong documentary requirements for a foreign national to apply alien employment permit, 
needs the following. Um, duly accomplished application form. Mr. Chair, with the indulgence of the minority floor, ito mo bang requirements sa to kailangan umpisahan nila dun sa China or umpisahan nila pag landing nila dito sa Pilipinas? Um, yung policy pong existing ngayon ay dito po sa Pilipinas nangyayari. So kaya turista muna silang pupunta yes. rito? Apo. So yun ang, yun ang parang uh, ano na, entry level turista ka? Opo. And then, photocopy of passport with visa or certificate of recognition for refugees or stateless persons. On the visa po, tama po kayo, karamihan po dito, or if not all, 9A visa, which is tourist visa. Again, I'm sorry to intervene. First, can you describe the procedure and later on the document? Saan ba dinadala ito, uh, etc.? The procedure first, which office will process uh, the yes. document submitted. Okay. And then we can go into the... Uh, okay, the documents po are submitted to our dollar regional offices. The dollar regional office? Okay. The EP application can be filed personally or through an authorized representative or prospective employer. Okay, sige. Yung sinusubmitin ron. Tingnan natin later kung ano yung mga dokumento. Basta it is submitted to the Dole Regional Office. All applications for AEP shall be filed at the Dole Regional or okay. Field Office having uh -huh. jurisdiction over the intended okay, place of work. Fine, all right. Submitted na doon sa Dole. Anong sunod? Applications of foreign nationals to be assigned in related companies may be filed in the Dole Regional Regional office will process the application and issue the new AEP within 24 hours after publication. Ito po yung labor market test na sinasabi po ni Yusek Akong. And payment of required fees and fines if there are any. So what they, they process the application? Yes. The dole? Yes, sir. Ano kong tinitingnan doon? May, uh, may mga publication na. Yes. Uh, that is one... I would see the one published, or we see the ones in the newspaper. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, theoretically, to to tell the whole world that these are the applicants for jobs, so kayo mga Pinoy na walang trabaho, mm. pwede kayong mag-object. Mag yes, uh, Your Honor. Right. So, okay, after that, and what then, happens? In po, after the publication, po, um, i-issue na nga po yung alien employment permit. So, may AEE -E na? AEP. Huh? AEP, AEP, alien okay. employment uh, AEP issued, okay. Uh, and then? And then, issuance. Ah, teka, sorry. So, yung AEP po na yan, kapag nakuha na po ng foreign national, they will submit that to the Bureau of Immigration oh, AEP, for, oh. for the issuance of a 9G visa or the working visa. For 9G? Yes, Your Honor. 9G visa. Just in Germany? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, okay, and then? Yun na po. Yun na. Sa, sa BI na po tayo, Senator Dila, no? Uh -huh. Dinala yung AEP sa BI. Uh -huh. Hindi po automatic na i-issuehan ng working visa. Yan. Am I correct? Because you were saying there are a lot of factors to be considered. Yes, Your Honor. Am I correct? What are the other factors other than the AEPs before uh -huh. you issue a working visa? Oh, Your Honor, uh, for the working visa, we the BI checks if there's a genuine genuine uh, employer employee relationship uh, we have to check if the if there's a proper proportion for Filipino workers and the uh, the so foreign right. workers how many AEP I really point how many AEPs have you issued say for first for how long is the permit and how many have you issued? Uh, let, let me uh, answer that, uh, Senator. 115,652 AEPs ang in issue from 2015 to 2017. Ganun po kakonti. Ang sigurong next question, yung in issue ba ng AEPs na yan, lahat po yan, nag nagkaroon ng working visa? Hindi, ba, bakit? Ang AAPs pa hindi pa ito working visa? Well, hindi pa, hindi pa. Uh, okay, from uh, after the AAPs are issued, what happens next? Uh, the, the applicant, your honor, they apply to the, they go to the bureau to apply for the working visa, your honor. So, 
We have, they can apply in the BI main office or in our subports. We have office in Cebu, in Davao, and in other regions, Your Honor. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, the AFP is not a working visa. Yes, Your Honor, it's not a working what visa. What is it for? It is just one of the requirements for the issuance of the working visa. Who issues the working visa? Uh, BI, Your Honor. The so why do you issue an AEP and then afterwards a visa? Uh -oh. uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Your Honor, the AEP essentially is the, uh, the evidence that it, they passed the labor market test, which means that there is no Filipino who is contesting the, the application. I, I'll ask a stupid question. <laughs> Has it ever been contested? Meron daw pong na-contest yung sa coach. Pero yun, yung mga coach nag-coach pa rin ngayon. That's why, yung sa, I'm just talking about the uh, Pogo, ha? Huh? Uh, Pogo. Mayroon bang na-deny dito? Uh, ito po yung Pogo at just to contribute. Ang isang dahilan na nabibigyan sila ng AEP ay highly technical, hmm. managerial, etc. Uh -huh. Pangalawa, yun po sa Pogo, yun pong language. Hmm. So, wala pong Pilipino. Oh, sige, parikan ko lang. Uh, uh, okay. So, you have 115,000 AEPs from 2015 to 2017, 2017, issued by the BID. And then, after this, working visas are issued? By BI? By BI? Yung question ho dun of the AEPs na in-issue ng DOLE, Ilan ho doon yung... Yung AAPs ang may issue ng DOLE? Yes. Hindi ang BID? No, DOLE po yun. Uh, uh, AAPs, DOLE, dadalin sa BI for working visa. Ah, uh, okay. Ang question niya... Ah, uh, okay. So, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. So, ilan, how many? Ilan? Ilan lang... Na, may nadideny ba doon sa may AAPs na nag-apply for working visa? Uh, your Honor, based on the records, most are approved, Your Honor. So, if they have 51... All, all. Yeah, all are approved. Almost, yes, Your Honor. Okay, so 115,652 only. Huh? Uh, your Honor, just uh, can... Am I... Uh, can... Please. Please, please, can you turn on your microphone, please? Yes, sorry. Um, regarding the, the Chinese nationals, uh, for 2017 to 2018, we have uh, around 50,000... Approved working visa, Your Honor. So it, it's almost the same as the uh, AEP is, is stated by the DOLE. How long usually uh, are these? Uh, what is the length of employment permit? How long is the efficacy of the visa? Uh, Your Honor, uh, we issued a visa. Um, it's either uh, as long as the, it, it's based on the, the period B is based on the length of the AEP or the employment contract, whichever is shorter. So how long, typically? Uh, usually it's one or two years, Your Honor. One or two years. That's the most common, Your Honor. One, two year, one year and two years. Huh? Okay. Now, uh, so, uh, now, so, so theoretically, 115, let's say 115,000 were you given, just theoretically though, because you said almost all but is given, eh? Huh? Are uh, the working visas since 2015 to 2018, you remember? Uh, you know, the 115,000 AEPs that Dolly was referring to refers to that overall AEPs, including mm. other nationalities, you yes. know. Ah. Not only to Pogo. Yes, Your Honor. Pogo was, and that's why I was just saying, Pogo lang muna, yun naman pinag natin. You would have no figure on that? That's why it's so dry, sir. Huh? Uh, we have to figure, uh, no, Your Honor, we don't have the exact uh, figure for the Pogo. No, so, so this is overall. Ngayon, what is the role of CESA and, and uh, PAGCOR uh, in all of this? Of, I mean, of the, uh, I'm sorry, not CESA particularly, but of the export processing zone. Uh, uh, Your Honor, regarding... Uh, they, do they issue any document? Uh, Your Honor, regarding the issuance of working visas for uh, nationals who are working for POGO, uh, we require the submission of um, valid Pogo license, Your Honor. No. So uh, can, can the export processing zone where this, 
giving operations uh, operate? Can they issue working visas without passing through BID or goal? Meron ba? As mentioned earlier, Senator Dillon, the, uh, the CESA, the PESA, even the CDC made mention that before they issue working visa, AEPs uh, are required and they have stringent measures according to them. So, there is, so uh, export pricing zone can issue uh, working visas independently of BID. Is that? Huh? Ms. Uh, Ms. Uh, Bordeaux, you recognized. Ms. Okawa. Yes, Your Honor. Oh, Ray, ano? Yeah. Your Honor, uh, in the case of CESA, as mentioned earlier, we require an AIP, AEP and uh, a record of no derogatory record from the BID before we issue the working visa. So it's CESA that issues the working visa. Uh -oh. and, uh, uh, and a Pogo worker cannot work in CESA unless he has an AEE and a working visa issued by the BID. Bogo, your honor, is different from CESA. It's under PAGCOR. So right. under the law, we, also, we are also authorized to issue, to operate online, offshore online gaming. Okay, alam ko under the law, you are authorized. So what we're trying to pin down is where do we get an accurate information as to the number of workers in the gaming industry regardless of <coughs> where they operate, of yeah. who issues the permit, etc. Uh, as far as CESA is concerned, Your Honor, this year we have uh, 936 uh, foreign uh, nationals and 2,418 local workers in CESA. So the percentage is 27% uh, in foreign. Just talking about uh, the process first. Uh, okay. uh. As far as the process is concerned, we have a... We have, we have a a copy of the process. Uh, just uh, answer my question. Uh, the controlled issuance is that of Dole, an AEE. AEP. AEP, I'm sorry, AEP, mm. uh, Alien Employment Permit. permit yeah. Without the Alien Employment Permit, we cannot you cannot we issue can, we cannot issue work, work visa. visa no. uh, the same thing with, uh, with uh, BID. Ganon din. Yes, Your Honor. So it would appear that everything is should be under the control, theoretically, of the dole. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Uh, Opo, Mr. Chairman. So, kung, kung sumobra, okay, if there is empirical proof that there are more than 100, 400 or 100, 400,000 or, or the workers in the Pogo far exceeds Ah, your record. Sino ang sisisihin dito? Who do we call Upan? Mr. Chairman, as far as Dole is concerned, all the documents emanating from the special zones, from PAGCOR, if we process and we issue the alien employment permit, this is turned over in turn to the uh, BP. Any other informal processes cannot be governed by the the processes that we undertake. The thing is, right now, it appears that it's glaring, Mr. I mean, uh, I think, uh, to, to the members of this committee, na yung, yung records ang konti nung inisyo na AEPs. Pero bumabaha yung mga... It appears and somehow it's clear that they are illegal workers. So yun yung tiyan natin. Mr. Chair, can I just give to... Yeah, what, with Senator, our permission, tatanong ko lang yes. kung ilan yung in-process. Okay lang. Kung ilan yung in-process. Senator Bina, you recognize. Ah, you said? Kasi na, nabanggit ko niya 115,000 yung nag-grant yun ng AEPs. Ilan naman ho yung in-process pa? I don't have the exact uh, figure now, but I can... While in-process, can they work? There is... Uh, a provisional uh, work permit that can be issued while the AEP is uh, being processed. But ultimately, this should be replaced by the AEP itself. Yo, can you just submit to the committee yung data? Yes. Ilan uh, yung in process? In process. We also submit the number of AEPs over a period of three years, which shows that it is increasing at a steady rate. 
Sige po, okay. bago lang kay Senator Isa, babanggitin ko lang, ito, list of condominiums. Willing po akong samahan kayo, lahat po kayo. SMDC, Pasay City, personal ko nakita. Parang may people power ang China doon. Okay? <laughs> Shell residences, shore residences, sea residency, residences, sasamahan ko po kayo. Sigurado ako, doon sila nagtatrabaho. Laureano de Travi Condo in Chino Roses, Makati, 80% po. 80% Chinese nationals, nandun ho. The Beacon Condominium in De La Rosa, Makati rin ho. Barangay Bel Air, Makati, yun din po. Yung kaninang binanggit natin sa Muntinlupa, 3,000 Chinese nationals, naghahanap ng 400 units na condo. 400. Ito po, eh, yung, yung 50,000 na sinasabi AEPs, eh kulang na ho dito na sa nabanggit natin. So, definitely something's wrong. Yun lang po yung gusto kong bangitin. Uh, let me recognize Senator Risa Antibero. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Gusto kong balikan uh, sunod yung binanggit na provisional work permits. Pero bago nun, dalawang tanong tungkol sa AEPs. Um, ano po ba yung basis ng AEP? Kasi obviously kung Pogo, given na yon yung facility sa Mandarin, kanila na yon. Pero sa construction workers halimbawa, ano yung nagiging basis ng uh, AEP? At pangalawa, magkano ang fees para sa AEP? Matanong din po sa uh, sa So, yun po, anong basis and then magkano po yung fees? Yung pong policy ay kinakailangan yung highly specialized technical managerial, which means that if it's an ordinary worker, hindi po pwedeng mag-issue ng AEP dyan. So, wala pong construction worker na, ini, na Chino na inisyohan ng AEP AP. dito? Pagamat hindi po pag-aamin yun na walang worker na Chinese na nagtatrabaho na unskilled So, so, matter of oversight po yun na siguro na, ma naman mas kayang gawin ng gobyerno natin kaysa isang ordinaryong manggagawang Filipino na makapag-object uh, o makapag-protest. Tapos yun, magkano po yung fee para makasecure ng AEP? Para makapag-apply at makatanggap ng AEP? Magkano yung fee? 5,000. The exact fee? Uh, it's it's 9,000 pesos. Uh, it's valid for one year. In other words, if it's three years, then you multiply by three. And then every year, there's an additional 4,000 pesos for renewal. But uh, uh, a part of the fee will be used for the publication. This is what is referred by the good senator, Dillon, where you see the publication. Just to mention lang, Risa, nung kanina binanggit natin, dito sa MOA area, kapitbahay ng Senado, last September 6, 2018, 34 Chinese nationals ang nahuli sa aktong nagtatrabaho sa isang construction site. Illegal po ito. Sa Karaga, doon po sa mining sector naman, may mga nagtatrabaho din po na nahuli. So, ito po, I think, ang bottom line dito, no, and, and please permit me to say this, Senator Lisa Muna, yung, yung monitoring, who is in charge? Who is accountable? If we issue AEPs, that's it na ba? Wala, wala na tayong pakialam kung Lumipat po yan, ng, uh, kasi pag in yung AEPs, uh, klaro kung saan lugar, saan sektor sila dapat nagtatrabaho. At sabi nyo nga po, highly specialized, supervisory, etc. But what happens kung sa iba sila lumipat? Iba pa rin yung pag-usapan natin yung illegal eh, na walang AEPs or yung in-process na binabanggit. Ako, I was surprised na ngayon, in-process pala, pwede pa rin silang magtrabaho. Yung mga nasa Pogo ba, ganun din? In-process po sila. Sa kamata ng chair sa PAGCOR, pareho lang ba ang fees para sa pag-secure ng AEP kapag nagtatrabaho sa POGO eventually? Or uh, pare pareho lang sa mga nagsisecure ng AEP to secure work permits to work in other sectors? Uh, Ma'am, I believe it's just the same with other sectors. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Follow up po dun sa nabanggit kanina ng provisional work permits. At salamat kay Chief Arellano dahil binanggit, uh, binalik kanina yung focus natin sa mga Chinese workers, no? both uh, legal at saka illegal na Chinese nationals na nagtatrabaho dito. There is another document, Mr. Chair, na hindi ko pa narinig na banggit in all the discussions so far. Noong August 2017 po, yung DOJ ay nag-issue ng Department Circular 041 granting visa upon arrival sa mga People's Republic of China nationals. Kung yung iba pong mga visas na pinag-uusapan natin would give foreign nationals 30 to at most 60 days na makapaglagi dito sa atin, itong visa upon arrival only for Chinese nationals ay umaabot ng 
not more than six months. So hanggang kalahating taon. Ito po ba ay nag-figure itong mga visa upon arrival para sa Chinese nationals, good for up to six months. Ito po ba ay nag-figure dito sa sudden proliferation ng mga foreign Chinese nationals dito sa atin na kailangan nating tanungin ngayon kung hindi pa sila nang aagaw ng trabaho sa mga kababayan natin. Um, uh, under the circular, uh, those who availed of the visa upon arrival, privilege, uh, they cannot apply for a working visa. So they are automatically disqualified. They have to go back to China and if they are interested, they have to seek an entry visa sa DFA, Your Honor. Pero kung meron silang, so, meron bang ibang nationals na may ganyang visa upon arrival privilege na worth six months, katulad ng mga bisita nating Chino? O sila lamang? Uh, Itsitsaka po, yun nga, I will check yung six months. Pero yung VUWA, that was uh, enacted especially to attract the ch uh, Chinese tourists, uh, especially for the, the yung cruise line, yun nga, so marami sa kanila. Yung mga nasa cruise line, they go through, they avail of VUWA. So bakit po six months ang ibinigay? Para lang sa cruise? Uh, Your Honor, I, I have to check that with the DOJ, Your Honor, kung bakit six months. At um, ano pa yung uh, ibang dahilan, may special reason ba para sa privilege na ito na kalahating taon? Meron ba talagang turista na kapag tour ng kalahating taon? <laughs> Uh, Your Honor, we will check that with the uh, DOJ, Your Honor, because it's the DOJ is the one that issued that, Your Honor. At paano po naman monitor na sa loob ng kalahating taon, hindi lang magtutur or magkukruz, pero di ba posibleng ay magnenegosyo na rin or magtatrabaho rito? Well, Your Honor, if, if they do that, uh, eventually we will find out and uh, they will be subject to deportation proceedings because uh, they, are, they cannot convert their... Uh, VUWA to a regular working visa, Your Honor. Pa pasensya na po, ha? parang nagpipinting yung tenga ko na we will find out. Kasi, um, how do we really monitor? Sir, uh, with all due respect sa Dole and uh, most of your good friends of mine, sa AEPs nagsisimula, eh. parang pagtinig na natin lahat. No? But if you look at how you, you apply for AEPs, hindi naman ganun kahirap eh. Madali naman eh. Basta ma-prove mo lang na highly technical. O. Pero yung dumadami pong nandito ngayon, sino yung nagmo-monitor dito? BI, are you monitoring itong mga binabanggit ko po? Again, i-challenge ko po lahat. Puntahan natin itong mga lugar na ito. Sa dami ng mga Chinese nationals na naririto. And even other national, nas na nationals, the foreign nationals na working here. Do we have a mechanism to monitor? Kasi... Tourist ba talaga sila na naririto? Nakabili na ng kondo, naghahanap ng kondo. Yung uh, mamaya puntahan ko yung pag ko, no? sorry, uh, medyo tumagal na before before I ask a uh, question sa ating uh, pag ko representative. Yung pong idea na binabanggit natin kanina na may mga lugar po dito na nakarating po yung report sa atin, isang uh, building, kukunin yung isang buong floor, tapos magtatayo ng negosyo pala doon, online gaming, dala-dala yung mga Chinese nationals. We don't even know if they were issued AEPs. Uh, Nache-check ba ito? Kung na-check yung, kung na-issuean talaga sila ng AEPs, namomonitor ba natin na nandun talaga sila? Do we have enough uh, monitoring uh, mechanism? Sige po, Yusek Lagunsad. Uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honors, maybe it's good to focus on what is termed as special work permits. This is be beyond AEP. The, and let me read. The special work permit is a work permit intended for short-term assignments up to six months. A local registered company must be willing to serve as the petitioner. The SWP is good for three months during the initial application and extendable for another three months. During the course of the SWP validity, the status of the national remains as tourist. The tourist visa extension must be undertaken if necessary. If we ask, is this covered by an AEP, the answer is no. And the exact figure uh, of SWPs issued uh, between 2015-2017 is 119,814. So these are uh, 
this was issued uh, without the benefit of AEP because the nature of their engagement is temporary, uh, covering three or, or six months. Uh, the policy issue, I think, is if they are still here beyond six months, do you consider them as uh, workers who have to be subject to uh, the labor market? This is issued by BI. Yes, it is. Mr. Chair, maybe we can get now an update from um, USEC Ariola. Tungkol dun sa tanong natin kanina about uh, issuing visa to Chinese nationals. Before you answer, let me acknowledge Senator uh, Grace Po. Uh, thank you for being here. Mr. Chair. Follow up um, sa BI, sa BOI pa rin, BID. Mula po nung inisyo ng DOJ yung Department Circular 041, ilan na po yung mga Chinese citizens na nabigyan niyang visa upon arrival, good for up to six months? Lahat po ba ng 3 million arrivals na bigyan ng visa upon arrival, Ay, good for six no, months? No. So, ilan po ang nabigyan? Your Honor, usually uh, those who are granted are those who, came, who, uh, who visit through the cruise line. But uh, I'm, I'm checking now with our office how many have been granted VUA as of, as of today. Uh, maybe in a 30 minutes, Your Honor, I'll, I'll check. With, with the permission of uh, uh, Senator Itovarius, kasi kanina tinanong ko kay Yusek Ariola, kung yung mga Chinese nationals kumukuha ng visa sa embassy natin, in China. Eh, kanina hindi nga masagada, hindi siya sure. So, maybe we can get that answer. Kung talaga bang, kasi syempre, di ba, from our embassy, doon palang isiscreen na nila yung papasok sa atin. Your Honor, uh, Senator Binay, as of 2018, as of to date, uh, the, we issued 1,656,630 tourist visas to all, to the, to the, che to, um, the Chinese. And we only issued 18 pre-employment visas uh, for 2018, Your Honor, alone. So how many again? It's uh, from all our foreign service posts in China to date, a total of 1,656,630 tourist visas were issued this 2018. And um, we only issued 18 pre-employment visas to the Chinese nationals. And yung visa nila is good for May validity ba yung visa na yan? Uh, multiple ba siya? Single entry? Valid, uh, it's valid for 59 days. Valid only for 59 days. Single end. I guess single yes, entry. Yes, Mr. Chair, just a quick yes, question. Uh, Senator Grace. Including, uh, these are just tourist visas, but not necessarily lab, uh, employment, right? Yes, sir. On Any employment, Ilan? We only issued, uh, actually, um, 18 pre-employment visas. 1818 your honor. 18 but the reality is ang dami na dito so yes, nalulusutan tayo ng, ng tourist visa pero dito na mamalagi nagmit na po kanina tourist tao sila papasok oh. uh, sa Edward Grace tapos biglang magkakaroon na ng uh, visa and working visa and what is uh, alarming uh, to me what you mentioned uh, Yusek Lagunsad na ang BI ang nag issue nitong uh, temporary uh, special visa special work permit that you don't even know uh, Mr. Chair uh, this is the special working permit does not require an alien employment permit because essentially they are considered tourists and that their stay is temporary Ilan ho yan? Uh, BI, kayo may record po yan? Would you confirm what you said lang inside the uh, mention? Uh, you're issuing a special, uh, somehow working visa? My, my record says it's 119,000. 119,000? You issued that? Uh, your Honor, under the rules, we, the BI issues a uh, special work permit, Your Honor. And, and you don't need to use AEPs as a basis. Because kanina, nalito kami, you, you were mentioning kanina, it's a requirement. Before you issue a working visa, yung AEPs, lahat kami dito, na, 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 ngayon, kahit walang AEPs, pwede palang mag-issue ng itong special work, work permits. I, I think, Mr. Chair, ang ginagamit ata to, for example, if you work for a mining company, tapos ikaw lang yung, kunwari, may technical knowledge ka, 
supposed to be one mark what what is the <laughs> no, one mark ka dito, the jurisdiction of BI to find out if they have the technical knowledge no, pero kasi nangyayari I think one month sila dito nagtatrabaho sila one month for example dun sa site tapos after one month umaalis na din sila um, ganun yung nangyayari yes, yes, yes your honor dito, that's the uh, idea your honor for those who will work here for short term uh, ang usual example ito your honor yung mga uh, import ng PVA, they get a special work permit. Uh, yung nagko-concert, special work permit. Uh, those who are sent here by by wait, corporations. Wait, wait. Uh, the, the figure is 119,000. Hindi naman lahat po yan, nagko-concert, saka <laughs> PVA player eh. Uh, can you give us a, a more substantial ano, uh, sector uh, breakdown kung saan galing po ito? I, ito ba kaya, ito kaya yung mga nakikita namin? Saan pumunta? Saan pumunta yan? Na, Namumonitor mo ba natin? Uh, Your Honor, uh, most of them, are, they are Chinese and they work for Pogo, Your Honor. Ayan. Mr. Chair, hindi kaya dapat ganito. Pag sila'y humingi ng isang tourist visa, pumunta sila dito, nagpapalit sila ng status, hindi ba dapat red flag na sa atin yun? At kaagad, parang we should have a policy that says, unless necessary, they shouldn't come in here under false pretenses. That should be the first. Diba? Otherwise, we'll be encouraging more influx of that kind of uh, situation here. And we don't have the expertise to actually evaluate. Plus, do we have coordination with the Chinese government that the people that are actually entering here have no criminal record. Okay. Mr. Chair, speaking of criminal activity, Please, follow uh, up. Uh, is, if Pogo operations, dahil nabalik na rin tayo sa focus sa Pogo, pag nag-engage po yung alin ng Pogo operations sa lascivious uh, online activity amounting to violations of the cybercrime law, mapoprosecute po ba ito? And have there been prosecutions to this effect. Kasi kung ano-ano mga horror stories na naririnig na rin natin about gambling, about yung play ng debts, at yung paggamit ng babae sa ganito mga operations, have these been looked into? At mayroon na bang prosecution na isinagawa kaugnay ng cybercrime law? Uh, Your Honor, uh, with regard to the Bureau, uh, the BI has uh, apprehended many uh, Chinese who are deep fugitives by their country, Your Honor. But the, the Bureau, Your Honor, uh, we, have, uh, we have arrested and prosecuted, uh, prosecuted uh, many fugitive Chinese, Your Honor, those who are wanted by their government, Your Honor. And just last, this November, we, we deported around almost 40 Chinese, Your Honor, for being fugitives. From, from their government. Mayroon po ba sa mga ito na either na-prosecute nyo or actually na-deport na ay pin-rosecute at dineport dahil lumabag sa cybercrime law kaugnay ng pagtrabaho nila sa Pogo operations? Uh, Your Honor, we will check the records but ay. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, uh, back in 2016, uh, in, with, uh, with regard to those who were arrested in Fontana, out of the 1,400, we criminally prosecuted 40, 40 plus, Your Honor, and they were convicted, Your Honor. And were any of them prosecuted and convicted? Kaugnay ng cybercrime law? Yes, Your Honor. For Togo operations? Um, uh, for illegal gambling, Your Honor. For illegal gambling. Yes. Pero paki, please get back to us on the details kung uh, there were any convictions based on violations against women dun sa mga na-convict niyong iyon. A further follow-up, uh, Mr. Chair, kaugnay nung tinatanong ko kanina, visa upon arrivals, nabanggit kasi ni Chair kanina no, yung mga uh, na-aresto sa construction site, sa Pasay City for working illegally, mga na-aresto sa Divisoria. Were, uh, ano yung mga visa classification ng mga ito? And were any of them recipients of those visas upon arrival na good for six months? Uh, the question is, sila ba yun, yung mga nabigyan na upon arrival visa? 
Kasi we're trying to find out, Mr. Chair, yung mga nabigyan ng visa upon arrival, good for six months, talaga bang lahat nagtutur lang, lahat nag-cruise uh, lamang, or they find their way into uh, illegal employment. Uh, sa ating bansa at naagawa ng Mr. Chair, Chair pwedeng victim sila ng human smuggling. Yeah. Isa pang dapat alamin yun. So, what does the BI say? Sorry. With regard to BUA, Your Honor, uh, those who availed, based on our records, those who availed of BUA, only 5%, 5 to 10% uh, applies for extension. So, initially, when they arrive here, they are given 30 days, and it could be extended up to 6 months, but initial stay is uh, 30 days, and only 5% applies for extension. Most, most go back to, to China because they cannot convert to other visas. So, yung tinatanong ko po yung naaresto sa Pasay, yung naaresto uh, sa Divisoria, sila po ba ano yung visa classification? Kung meron man, sabi nga ni Senator Nancy, sinabi niyo kanina, yung iba doon, ni walang hawak na passport. But were any of those arrested? Just in those two incidents mention, mentioned by the chair earlier, meron ba sa kanilang ang hawak ay yung visa upon arrival na good for six months? Um. Uh, Your Honor, uh, based on our records, uh, we arrested, those we arrested in uh, Pasay here in uh, near Mova, uh, they were working as uh, uh, construction workers. Uh, uh, Your Honor, tourist visa, they... Um, okay, uh, Attorney Aureliano, just to clarify lang, ang question ni Attorney... Ri eh, Attorney Ri <laughs> Senator Risa, sorry. Ang question lang ni Attorney Ri, ni, ni Senator Risa, yung mga naaresto niyo ba, ang visa bang hawak nila ay yung mga dumating dito sa Pilipinas na upon arrival ay binigyan ng visa. Sila ba yon? Party ba sila doon sa mga naaresto na yon? Uh, Your Honor, uh, I'm sorry but I have to check with our officer. But they, they, most of them were holders of uh, tourist visa. I just have to check if... They entered through Bua yeah. or through... Hindi natin Bula. sigurado kung sila yung upon arrival. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Okay. Chair, yun bang ating mga construction uh, projects ng gobyerno, meron ba kayong record na may mga Chinese nationals na tumutulong? May mga nadidinig ako na kahit sa Marawi, sila yung kinukuhang mga construction workers or contractors. Remember, yung sinabi ng Presidente, kaya nga tayo may build, build, build. Aside from infrastructure, para magkaroon ng trabaho ang mga Pilipino hindi para ibigay sa banyaga kung meron naman tayong kakayanan na gawin dito. Number one, what are the skilled types of jobs that we don't have here that we need foreign workers to come in? So these are my questions. Meron ba talagang mga proyekto ng gobyerno kung saan ang mga banyaga ang nagtatrabaho at hindi mga Pilipino? Uh, Mr. Chair, thank you, ma'am. Uh, our record shows that uh, for the last three years, there is an accumulation of about 2,000 Chinese workers in the construction. And these are workers who have technical uh, specialized skills. Uh, if there are workers, Chinese workers, who are unskilled and, and not technical, then they are not uh, holders of uh, any visa or alien employment permit. In other words, these are illegal. Bigyan niyo po ako ng example. Uh, ito po mga supervisor, mga may kakayahang tumingin ng kabuuan rather than specific skills. Uh, they are engineers, architects. Ito How about in Marawi, sir? The, are you aware with any... Uh, we, we will uh, uh, look at our records uh, okay. on Marawi. I, I Thank don't you, Mr. A, Chair. I apologize. Can, can I just, uh, uh, hindi ko, hindi ko maiwan yung issue ng AEP sa uh, BOI, no? Uh, I think, ang bottom line, kanina binanggit, CESA, PESA, CDC, kanina, noong una, ang BI, ang basehan is yung AEPs. Kasi, importante yun para masiguro natin na hindi available, hindi kayang punan, ng kapwa nating kababayan yung trabaho na ibibigay sa banyaga. That's how it is. Ha? Ilang beses pinag-uusapan. That's how important it is. But then, yung kanina, binanggit, ang uh, BI nagbibigay ng special working visa without AEPs for six months. Ang, ang question is, sige, 
nasa jurisdiction nyo ba ito? Pangalawa, do you have the expertise to find out kung uh, highly technical ito? Ito ba ay talagang hindi po pwedeng uh, makita natin o Pilipino yung po pwedeng gumam, mag, mag, gumam, mag, gampanan yung trabaho na available na yun? Hindi ko, hindi ko kasi ma... Before we go to Pagkor, no, sorry, yun, 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 hindi ko talaga ma, ma-take eh. Kasi yun lang yung pinaka... pinaka-depensa natin doon sa constitutional provision na dapat unahin yung mga Pilipino bago banyaga sa mga trabaho na naghihintay para sa ating mga kababayan. Uh, ato ni Ariliano. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, sir, just to, yeah, no, just to clarify, uh, the special work visa, uh, it is good only for uh, three months and can be renewed for another three months. After that, Uh, they are they, they can no longer required for uh, they can no longer apply okay, for I, this for is the question extension. pwede bang mabigyan ng special visa yung isang banyaga na supposed to be kunyari ang trabaho niya cashier na kayang gampanan ng mga Pinoy pwede uh, hindi Three months lang ka mo eh konti lang under the rule your, uh, under the rule your honor no paano mong malalaman uh, you have the expertise Your, BI? Your, uh, I don't think we have any case where Bureau uh, granted an SWP to a cashier, Your Honor. So, ang ibig sabihin, puro Pogo lang talaga yun? Uh, majority, Your Honor, are Pogo. Ma- most of them, Your Honor. And the problem with Pogo is that they, they are the only ones who can speak Mandarin. Can all, oh, marami din Pilipino nagsasalitang Mandarin. Yes, Your Honor, but not, 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 that, not that many, no? not that skilled, Your Honor. Uh, that, that that Honor, uh, we, we also, just to follow up, Your Honor, uh, we only issue SWP if they could submit a valid uh, valid POGO license, Your Honor. Mr. So, Chair, parang yeah, 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 but I don't want to, to leave this ano, issue. No? Yung, yung human resources development, naka, naka-angkla sa doli. Eh. Yung human resources natin, they would know. Eh. Kaya may AEPs. So don't you think it's, it's, it's ridiculous for for BOI. Dole, would you agree na kayo yung may expertise para tignan ito? Uh, yes, we agree. And uh, this is a specialized and specific function, uh, the labor market test. The SWP, however, states that the visa remains to be tourist. Kanya po walang jurisdiction ng door kasi tourist ang nature ng kanyang entry. Oh, yeah. Tourist. So the moment this becomes uh, an employment issue, We have jurisdiction. We will Mr. assert Chair. our jurisdiction. Oh, Mr. Okay. Chair. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yes, Parang lumalabas kasi ito yung 555 version na. Chinese version. <laughs> ito yung hey, ito yung security of tenure. Pagbasok dito, ito yung check eh. Kung yung ito 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 kasi pwede mo silang SWP muna kung less than six months yung nature ng trabaho nila. Mr. Chair, Madam, uh, Your Honor, we assert that if the nature of um, entry is engagement in work, the jurisdiction should be dull. But if it's uh, a tourist or a temporary work, then of course it is a... Even temporary work? Uh, no, temporary uh, visa. Uh, for for six months, ah uh, no, uh, 60 days, then it is the, the Again, bureau. if it involves work, y- it should be done. Sigur, you said, Ariola, may data mo ba kayo if there are other countries offering that same type of visa? Na parang tourists, pero pwede din sila magtrabaho within six months. Um, in the case of UAE, Your Honor, you have a job seekers visa for six months. Uh, if you find a job, then you'll have a working visa. Hindi, yeah, pero ang pasok mo, tourist pa din. I, I, they allow it. I, I, only in UAE. Oh. So sa UAE, may ganong arrangement na yes. tourist, tapos yeah, magtatrabaho for six months. Yes, they, especially now, they allow that uh, you can convert. But in other jurisdictions, I'm not sure where they are. Maybe you can uh, just uh, ano, submit to the committee. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Before, before we ano, no, uh, continue, let's, let's finally ask Padgor about, about all this uh, mga online uh, gambling, etc. Baka mas marami kaming matutunan para maintindihan po namin yung uh, 
pogo eh at the same time meron pa tayong social dumping na pag-uusapan. Ah, sa pagko po yung unang hearing natin I think December 2017 I remember. Malinaw po yung uh, panlilin lang nung ibang kumpanya na nadiskubre natin dun sa na nandun sa Clark ang uh, record po at uh, ang uh, ang uh, pakiwari nila sila daw po ay isang BPO company pero yun pala online sugalan ang uh, trabaho. Uh, web design ba yun, yung uh, whatever it is, no? Naglabas po kayo ng pronouncement yung uh, bag course dun sa inyong offshore rules and regulations uh, sa inyong uh, page po. Uh, mayroon po kayong kakayahan na mag-regulate ng special class of BPOs, and I quote, special class of BPOs, na nag-i-issue po ng licenses sa mga legitimate gaming operators. Uh, Uh, am, am, I, am I correct about this? And uh, kompleto po yung listahan yun ng uh, BPO support services na ito. And uh, can you give us an update? And uh, baka may gusto rin kayong uh, information, additional information you want to uh, give us, uh, especially dito po sa pinag-uusapan natin dahil it appears ang bumabaha pong uh, trabaho ngayon na, na, na kung saan yung mga Chinese nationals ang uh, namamayagpag ay doon po sa online gaming. Again, we are saying na kung legal naman po, wala naman po itong problema eh. Kung legal naman po. Pero kung uh, illegal na, walang AEPs, wala rin permit. Eh, at pangalawa, na kung pwede namang gawin ng mga Pilipino yung trabaho, syempre ayaw natin mangyari yun dahil nananakawan ng trabaho yung ating mga kababayan. Ma'am Atoyni Fernandez, you're recognized. Good afternoon, everyone. Okay. So, first of all, in your question, sir, about special class of BPO, uh, I just would like to clarify that a special class of B BPO is only one of the different kinds of service providers being accredited by PAGCOR. Actually, we only have one special class of BPO, and the requirements for a special class of BPO is different from other service providers. Okay. So, um, para bigyan ko lang po kayo ng... Ma uh, background, ang nililisensyahan po ng PAGCOR ay mga tinatawag nating POGO o yung Philippine Offshore Gaming Operators. At present, we have 58 licenses po. And these licenses have service providers who provide the components of the operation. And those, compo uh, those component providers are accredited as service providers. And we have different kinds of service providers such as customer relations service provider. And then we also have st strategic support provider. IT support provider, live studio and content streaming provider, and the special class of BPO. So, uh, most, yes, yeah, special class of BPO. Okay. Yeah, and we also have a gaming support, a gaming software platform provider. So, um, Your special class of BPO, sir, it uh, it is a kind of uh, it is a kind of service provider servicing legitimately licensed gaming operators abroad. So not Pogos in the Philippines. So that's why yes, not Pogos licensed by Pagcor, but Pogo uh, operators licensed abroad, um, such as the UK, sir. Um, for the record, no, my question, wala. You, you you have the right to I mean it's under your jurisdiction to 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 give licenses no to this uh, I mean special class of BPOs. But uh, forgive my, my innocence on on, on PAGCOR operations. I was a member of Congress in the House of Representatives for quite a long time. I'm sure a lot of PAGCOR officials know me very well because uh, I, I I've been a staunch supporter of the president's uh, belief na hindi dapat lumaki itong mga gambling institution sa ating bansa uh, it, it 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 i mean i can debate with anyone because it promotes laziness and uh, we we depend on game of chance etc and all that and, and during the deliberation of pagcor's uh, franchise i remember itong uh, uh, gaming gaming very general ho kasi and, and i think you would agree with me na because it's general at ngayon meron ng online gaming, pinasok na lang din po yan. Am, am I correct uh, in, in saying that? And, and therefore, because of that, it became uh, inherent somehow to PAGCOR to issue licenses on online gaming. Is that, is that a correct uh, 
uh, assumption? Uh, yes, sir, because um, under the charter, we add there is one institution who shall centralize uh, a centralized and integrated institution who shall um, regulate the conduct of gaming in the Philippines. But specifically, it's not online gaming because during that time, I don't think we are aware of online gaming. And just to put on record, uh, I remember itong uh, revised penal code, yung uh, libel before, uh, wala pang cyber crime, wala pang cyber libel. And in fact, the Supreme Court. Uh, issued a, an order na hindi saklaw nitong RPC, ang Revised Penal Code, itong uh, uh, cyber libel. Kaya nga ang Kongreso ay nagpasa ng panibagong batas, itong mga cyber crimes, etc. I'm just putting it on record that perhaps uh, this committee should look into because during the time when we issued the, uh, the, the franchise of uh, PAGCOR, hindi naman pinag-uusapan at hindi klaro dyan na online gaming po yan. I'm just... I'm just saying for the record. But uh, let me uh, continue uh, my, 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 my uh, uh, asking these questions, ma'am. No? Dun sa inyong uh, um, uh, page, dito nga uh, offshore rules and regulations uh, page, nakalagay po dito, one of the requirements for any BPO to be licensed by PAGCOR is to have a work, uh, workforce comprised of 90% Filipinos. Uh, must there been an official issuance of, uh, on these regulations or workforce requirement for, 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 for licensing? Official po ba ito? O yung nasa page lang? Um, that was a, memorand a, a memorandum, sir. And it was only published in the website. But it's an official document, sir. Are you saying that's an official uh, 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 policy of, of uh, PAGOR? Now, is the issuance of the licenses to this... Uh, BPOs already taking place? Yes, sir. Um, sir, just a clarification. We all uh, we only issue licenses to POGOs. And then we, uh, we only issue accreditation to service providers. And a special class of BPO is, an is, an in a, is a service provider that is only accredited. Okay. Uh, balikan, balikan ko po yun yung 90%. How do you now monitor that... Uh, uh, compliant po sila. Because, again, uh, puntahan natin yung sa Clark. Yung sa Clark, yun na yung sa Clark, uh, 1,240. Uh, Ang Pilipino, ilan yun? 4 ba o 11? Doon po sa nahuli ka makailan ng BI, doon po sa Pasig, uh, Ilan yung Pilipino? Labing isa, dalawa. Dun sa... 93 illegal Chinese workers. Tapos ang Pilipino, pa ng 11 ho yata? Uh, Your Honor, uh, it's the PNP that arrested them. PNP. Now, not BI. Okay. Yeah, but I think it's 11. So, naging baligtad. Ang 90% banyaga. <laughs> ang 10% ang Pilipino. I, I'm just saying this uh, because... Uh, commendable po yung, yung intention ng uh, PAGCO, but still, if, if we cannot, how, how do we monitor it? Uh, how do we implement it? Uh, sir, again, clarification, we only require the 90% work a Filipino workforce for a special class of BPO. And as of the moment, we only have a w we only have one accredited special class of BPO, and the others are the others that you are that we, we uh, that were referred to earlier are other kinds of BPOs. Yes. Na hindi kailangan ninety yes, percent. Yes. Hindi pa pwedeng i-apply din ho dun yun, yung gusto natin. Uh, sir. We, we may, uh, we may uh, consider Sige, that. Pag-aralan nyo po dahil pag-aralan din po namin yung online gaming dahil when we gave the, uh, the franchise, hindi naman po namin napag-usapan yan. But anyway, uh, any questions? From before we go to social dumping para we have one more hour. Uh, Senator Grace? Yeah, actually, um, siguro po, nabanggit na rin ninyo, Mr. Chair, na pag-aralan nga natin mabuti itong online gambling dahil marami din sa ating mga kababayan walang trabaho. So siguro, yung mga programa rin ng DOLE kung saan pwede silang gumawa ng uh, pag-aaral, paano matatrain yung ating mga BPO na magsalita ng Chinese o kung may mga basic lines lang naman na kailangan matutunan o even technical support. 
um, we should also be able to compete in this particular field and reclaim our, our industry here. Um, meron ba kayong mga ganong klaseng programa, sir? Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, bilang information, meron pong mga 28 na positions sa gaming na nabibigyan ng AEP at nandito po yung listahan. Uh, ang isang paraan, at, at this is uh, in the original uh, labor code, ay magkaroon ng understudy sa bawat isang uh, alien uh, worker, meron siyang understudy. Halimbawa, isang chef, a Chinese chef, kinakailangan meron siyang Pilipinong understudy para after a while, eh, natututunan niya yung kaalaman noong foreign Yan worker. Yan ba yung ginagawa sa mga pugo? Siguro, ilan, ilan ba talaga yung empleyado ng Pogo? Tinanong, tinanong yan ni Senator Drillon earlier, but for the record, how many Chinese nationals are employed in the Pogo sector? Um, we do not have the exact number, ma'am. How come? Shouldn't you have that? Or who should have it? Yung AEPs ba yan na uh, ini-issue nyo? Or working visa? If, if it is legal, uh, uh, Senator Grace, kasi it looks like illegal eh. It looks like tourist visa yung hawak nila eh. Because what's going to happen now is we might have to encourage Dole to actually visit every single Pogo office to, to check their papers. I'm willing to accompany them, yes, Senator Grace. I think you I'm should. Willing. I'm willing. I have the list already. SMDC, Pasay City, Shell Residences, Shore Residences, Sea Residences, Laurano de Trevi Condo, Inchino Roses, oh. uh, De La Rosa Makati, the Beacon Condominium. Et and I think we should we should really do that so that uh, they know they get the message that we're serious and we're taking care of our borders outside but within the country itself we're not able to control um, foreign citizens um, another thing is I think that um, you should anyway pl please answer first this question thank you ma uh, I think the first cut is uh, whether they possess AEP or not so we'll be able to identify or sort out those who are not uh, uh, in possession of, of formal work permits. That, if they are point. illegal, sir, what do you do with the companies? Eh, kwan ho yun eh, uh, dapat ma-deport yun, at saka kung yan ay mayroong na-violate na labor standard, ay mananagot din po yung, yung kumpanya. So that's the first cut. The second cut is... Uh, Just to give me the figures, no? 115,000 yung AEPs, 119,000 yung special working visa, uh, Ang nakasuhan is 200. Is that correct? Okay. Yung figures natin. Kanina, uh, BI, you, you gave us that figure, yung 200 cases. Okay. Uh, to continue with that. The, the second cut, I think, uh, and to follow the, the policy intent, is to check whether the, those in possession of AEP are actually helping the company and the country because there is a reason for allowing them to work and then part of the external effects that we should actually specify is the learnings of the understudy we can do that uh, so eventually kagaya ho sa isang municipality nag requiring mayor ng uh, subjects or training sa chinese so sinasabi niya dapat marunong ng chinese ang mga pilipino Para meron tayong i-alok kasi... Anong, may, sinong, anong municipality po yun? Maganda yun. Uh, let me get the exact... And, and also, like, to remind Attorney Fernandez, if you can make a note of this, we have that law pala, uh, yeah. or regulation from Dole. So, your pogos, I'm please send them a memo that they should have understudies. Para naman yung mga Pilipino natututo rin, and eventually we can take over... Um, whatever th they're doing. Let me put also on record, TESDA has language skills institutes. It's all over the country. There are 42 uh, uh, language skills institute ng, ng TESDA where, where they can actually uh, 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 teach and uh, for our people to learn. Kung totoong walang... Kasi uh, if, if this is going to, to uh, continue, continue. Eh, dapat na paghahandaan po natin. Uh, Ma'am, uh, we I was informed that the, the language school is in Bataan. Uh, maybe it's good to look at what they're doing and whether it is producing the effects that uh, the mayor wishes. But in, in TESDA, uh, TESDA, I used to sit as chair of TESDA for the secretary. Uh, I was told that 
language uh, schools are also accredited by by TESTA, N not only the schools of TESTA, but... What, what I'm right. saying is the directly being supervised yes, by yes, TESTA. I'm yes. not even talking about other accredited, schools accredited yes. by TESTA, yeah. yes. Yes, yes. Meron din, siyempre hindi naman lahat pinapaniwalaan sa social media, pero sa Bureau of Immigration, totoo ba na meron mga ibang Chinese nationals na pumapasok sa ating bansa na gamit talaga Philippine passport. So, ibig sabihin eh, doon pa lamang sa embahada natin, nakakakuha sila ng ganon? Totoo ba ito? May mga nahuli na kayong ganyan? Uh, yes, Honor. Uh, there are instances, but uh, not many, Your Honor. Uh, there are instances. There so, instances. you have it on record. Yes, uh, we, we, uh, we charge some Chinese who tried using Philippine passports. How did you coordinate with the FA about it? Yes, sir. Because she was surprised, I think. <laughs> so oh, oh, paano nila nakuha? Are they using an existing Filipino passport or did they falsify their uh, documents? Before, uh, around 2015, 2016, uh, there were instances, but 17, 18, I will check, Your Honor, if there are still... Question ni Senator Grace, falsified ba o talagang legitimate? Uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes they are legitimately issued. We have one case, but that, that was way back in 2012 and 2013. We even filed a case in Quezon City to have it nullified the passport. Dalas-dalas niyo yung pag-uusap niyo kung hindi linggo-linggo magbihirin tayo dito. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, uh, that's, that's very rare. That's not many. Sige po. Na, na nahuhuli ninyo. <laughs> Di ba? I mean, very rare na may nahuli kayo. Hindi natin sinasabing marami, pero kung nakalusot yan dati, for sure meron yan. Eh kung yung, sorry ah, I don't want to sound xenophobic, but, you know, they can, a lot of uh, other countries, not just them, Eh, kung yung mga gamit nga natin, eh, na, <laughs> nagagawa ng kopya, yung pakayang passport natin, di ba? So, pwede bang pakibantayan mabuti yan? Siguro, Mr. Yes, Chair, sir. can you give us an update dun sa case na yan? Kung may nakasuhan ba from the embassy, um, kung uh, did we file cases, tapos na convicted na ba yung gumawa niyan, or, <laughs> or, wala, or wala nang nangyari, parang pinabayaan na lang. Can you submit to the committee yes, sir, an update dun sa falsification of ano uh, hindi pala Philippi hindi pala fake yung passport uh, fraudulently acquired uh, a fraud fraudulently passport. acquired yeah. passport sige po uh, yes uh, ma'am ma before before I, I recognize you i just i just wanted to uh, before we leave this topic yung visitorial powers ng dole uh, siguro kailangan natin strengthen yon what needs to be done uh, uh, you have enough people to, to do it. Sa BI din, how do you monitor? Kasi yung binabanggit po natin, kung hindi tayo naaalarma dito sa dami ng mga uh, Chinese nationals, na, again, kung legal sila, wala tayong problema na pinag-uusapan. Pero it appears to me na illegal eh. Dahil looking at the figures that you made mention, the issuance of AEPs, the issuance of uh, working visas, masyadong madami. Uh, for them to imagine sa isang condominium doon na sa Muntinlupa 400 uh, units of condo units ang hinahanap ng mga 3000 uh, Chinese nationals i mean dapat may red flag na sa atin eh Mr. Chair. hope we can do something about Mr. it Chair, since sa uh, banggit may monitoring pwede mo bang malaman sa dole ilan ho ba yung personnel niya na dedicated for this and then sa BID din ilan yung naka-deploy sa inyo para maghanap ng mga illegal workers Madam Chair, uh, Mr. Chair, ma'am, we have uh, more than 600 inspectors. Uh, kasama ho lahat siya. Pero yung 600 pati, inspectors, lahat ho yun, di ba? Kasama opa, pati yung mga opa, local in, companies. In the course of their inspection, kasama po yung pag-detect pag ng AEP. So, ang record po namin, nag-inspect kami ng 36,137 ngayong taon at 60,732 nung isang taon at lumalabas na yung mga AEP na na-issue ay legitimate. 99.85%, 99.65%, yun pong AEP ay legitimate. So, wala hong na-detect yung mga inspectors namin na illegal. In other words, we, we confirm, eh kung may illegal po yun, eh hindi namin na-inspect, 
hindi namin ho alam yon but we, hindi dadaan sa inyo ho illegal maari ho tama uh, in other words if the AEP was issued and we inspect it, it nandun pa ho hindi pa siya expired totoong siya ay na-issue one etc so uh, but uh, I think we should prioritize this part uh, especially next year since it's becoming a, an emerging issue so, Chair, sa BID naman ako. Kasi I think this is also very important dahil we are also in the middle of budget deliberation. And, you know, if you need an additional budget for monitoring, I think our Chair would be more than willing to sponsor, to increase your budget for monitoring. Uh, yes, Your Honor, uh, that's, a, that's a problem for the Bureau, Your Honor, because we only have right now 80 intelligence personnel who, who we are deploying to survey the the violations you're on. 80 in the whole Philippines you're on. 80. 80 you're on. Covering 100 million Filipinos and uh, dun po sa 80 na yun, sir, are they aware of this? Again, parang sira akong plaka. SMDC pa sa city, shell residences, shore residences, sea residences. Aware naman po sila dito. I mean, hindi ba... Masakit lang isipin na, again, kung legal po sila, wala ko ang problema. Um, hindi ko alam. I, I think nakakaalama rin po eh, na pag na natin sila, yung ganun kadami, and hindi lang possibility na nananakawan tayo ng trabaho, pati tirahan ngayon, nananakawan na tayo. I mean, I hope we're, we're doing something about this. And again, I'm, I'm more than willing to accompany any one of you to, to go to these places and kausapin natin, tignan natin, sitahin natin, anong hawak nilang visa, nagtatrabaho ba sila, bakit sila nakabili agad o nakakuha ng kondo, etc. Mr. Chair, bago kayo magtapos sa topic na ito, nais ko rin ipaalala sa inyo, hindi lamang sa nawawala ng trabaho ng ating mga kababayan sa ngayon, ang isa pa natin dapat isipin dyan ay ito, ang pagkukontrol ng isang bansa sa atin. Kung nag ang kanilang bansa na kuwin lahat yan at nakadepende ang ating ekonomiya sa kanila. Pati na yung real estate, yung real estate natin, yung mga inuupahan dito, yung mga kumpanya na nakadepende dyan, eh tayo ang, mahi, tayo ang uh, mapipiligro. Kaya siguro talagang dapat seryosohan. At maraming salamat, Mr. Chair. Talagang puntahan po ninyo sa umaga lahat yan. Inspectionin natin ang mga pasilidad na yan. Dahil nga 600 BI uh, Department of Labor employees lang pala meron para mag-inspection. Mag maraming salamat. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, sorry. Uh, our uh, Deputy Director General of PESA. Ma'am, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Just for the record, uh, Your Honor, PESA, as a matter of policy, does not register any gambling activity, whether casino or online gambling. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, uh, Mr. Roquero. <coughs> Thank you, Your Honor. <coughs> For the record also, Your Honor, uh, CESA has canceled uh, 130 licenses of interactive gaming uh, and uh, also revoked or canceled, terminated the CESA working visas of uh, 12,468 foreign nationals. Thank you. And let me also put on record, I've been getting a lot of text messages and we are in FB Live. There are about 200 complaints already na ang dami-daming mga Chinese nationals, iba-ibang lugar, baka pwede yung tignan natin. Ito may Sapalanan, Makati, etc. Um, Macheck lang po sana natin kasi yung ibang complaints po, hindi lamang yung doon sila nagtatrabaho, nagtatrabaho sila, illegal workers sila. Ang ibang complaints ay eh, gabi-gabi, uh, madaling araw inuman at uh, madalas gising at nakaka-istorbo ng mga kapitbahay. So I hope tingnan din po natin yun. Are there any other concerns on this particular issue before we go to social dumping? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, let's go to the next issue uh, na simulan na ho natin kanina. Balikan ko lang po yung POEA. Uh, uh, if you have any uh, opening statement, uh, kanina nabanggit ho yung uh, United Prime Mover Enterprises Inc. At mukhang sabi ng DFA, sila lagi yung concern. Ano ba yung uh, uh, ginagawa natin dito? And, and doon na rin po sa nangyari uh, at mga nangyayari na social dumping, sir. Please, uh, Mr. Plan, you're recognized. Good afternoon, Warners. Actually, we've already consolidated our report to Dole 
However, uh, siguro uh, magbibigay lang po ako ng konting details with regards sa ginagawa po ng POEA. Uh, based on our initial report po nung with regards to the 150 truck divers na, na stranded po sa Denmark, uh, based on our invest initial investigation, 59 po dito ang pinadala ng United Prime Movers Enterprises to HBT International Transport. Yun po yung uh, uh, f uh, foreign recruitment agency na out of the reported 150, 59 po ang pinadala po ng United Prime Movers uh, Enterprises. Yung po yung uh, uh, nasa records po namin. But that's just in Denmark? That, no po. That's, that's po po in po po lang. Actually po, wala pong pinadala ang, ang United Prime Movers sa Denmark. It is only sa po lang po. Kasi yung par, uh, foreign placement agency nila is a Polish uh, recruitment, recruitment agency. But Uh, Siguro, parang, it, parang nagyayaw, it was an agency to agency. Yes po. Parang ganun po yung arrangement. Yes po. So, ang, ang nangyari po is pinadala po ng United Prime Mo Movers sa HBT International Transport. Okay, yan po yung kopya nyo. Doon sa 150 na yon meron bang nanggaling doon from Saudi Arabia ng mga Pilipino rin? Uh, na kung saan Prime Mover din yung uh, kasali? Actually po, kasi that would be a third country. Yeah. So you don't have the records for Wala that? Po. Okay. Uh, it is a regular recruitment See, practice po. I asked that question because a while ago, the, the, the USEC for DFA made mention uh, it is not just in this particular case na itong prime mover ang, uh, ang uh, involved no? yes. other, in other cases then. But we'll, we'll talk about it later. Sige, you want to continue? Mr. Chair, siguro pakibigay na yung breakdown ng 150. Kung kaya, kasi you said 59 dun sa United Prime Movers. San, san yung 100? Actually po, yun po ang undocumented po. The, the rest po, uh, undocumented po. Uh, just to add din po, it is not, uh, yung sa under the investigation po ng ABS-CBN correspondent, ang, ang, uh, ang, ang pinagtatrabuhan po nila is Kirk Bauer, which is a Uh, Bauer, which is a subsidiary of HBT International. Uh, United Prime Movers now don't have any relationship with Kurt Bauer. Ang, ang relationship nila is with HBT International, which is, according to the report, is a subsidiary of Kurt Bauer. Yeah, uh, we can we can uh, probably excuse yung uh, ilang mga guests po natin from CDC, Pagcor, CESA, PESA, um, BI. Thank you, thank you very much, ma'am, sir, for, for, for being here. Mga limang oras pa po kami dito. Uh, mm, biro lang po. Pero may libre yung ano, uh, foots pa dyan. Test the certified. Anyway, let's let's, let's continue lang. Uh, sa Dole, um, Itong phenomenon in European Union called uh, social dumping is not new in Europe, especially in the uh, transportation industry, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Uh, you know, you know, transportation companies nag offer ng long uh, distance tracking service would usually register themselves in European countries that have the lowest minimum uh, wage, such as Poland, if I'm not mistaken. Some, di some of these companies are also notorious for maltreating their employees by not providing uh, rest hours to uh, long-distance truck drivers. Na monitor ho ba natin ito? And uh, uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, one of Polo's mandate is to monitor and uh, report to Dole as the uh, mother unit. Pero may Polo ba tayo doon? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, sa Europe po, ang mga Polo, ay nasa London, Madrid, Rome, Milan, Geneva, at Athens. Uh, so, dun sa Scandinavian areas. Malapit na siguro dyan, Norway? Meron po ba? Wala, wala rin. tayo sa wala rin. Norway. Yun Kanino po, under yung ano? Denmark. Yung mga Denmark? Ang matalas pong which jurisdiction? Uh, gumaganap nung, yung, jurist, uh, yung trabaho dun ay nung araw nasa Brussels, nung ako'y nasa Brussels, sinasakop ko yun. 
Pero ngayon, Geneva po ang, sa, sa, sa katunayan, yung pong attache ng Geneva ang pumunta dito para investigahan. Meron po kaming mga reports uh, at uh, isasubmit na lang sa inyo. Sige po, uh, pasubmit na lang. Yeah, siguro yung kahit na maging specific po tayo, yung efforts po natin in oh, helping itong particular case na to and at the same time yung uh, uh, papalan natin sila mapoprotektahan. And ano na rin ho, uh, bigyan nyo kami ng, uh, ng uh, suggestion kung paano natin na... Uh, matutukoy ito. Balikan ko lang, uh, sir, uh, sa POEA, kasi kanina binanggit ni uh, Yusek uh, Ariola yung, yung ilang uh, cases, not just this particular one, no, in, in, uh, in the Denmark, Poland uh, area. Same po eh, same yung uh, United Prime Mover uh, Enterprises. Ano na po ba yung uh, action natin na ginawa dito? Actually, sir, uh, suspended din po ngayon yung United Prime Suspend po so, so basically po, hindi po sila pwede mag-process ng any or ACs po. So, pending the investigation. Pending the investigation. But we have already uh, called them and in fact, we will be submitting to you a clear support on this. Nakausap na namin yung may-ari ng United uh, Prime Movers and na they will be submitting also the posi their position paper uh, with regards to this one. Mr. Chair, may... Kasi yung arrangement nila, bawal ho ba yung ganung arrangement that si United Prime Movers may... Ang kakontakt na is another tracking agency, bawal ho ba yun? Ba bawal na bawal po. So technically, ha, dapat si United Prime Movers, ang client niya is si Kurt Bayer. Dapat to, ganun yung setup? Uh, kung, kung, ang tama po yung pagka parang hindi maging bawal. Pero sa, sa situation na ito, ang, ang foreign placement agency nila is a Polish agency. So dapat, ang, ang job site nila should be sa Poland, hindi po sa, sa Kaya Bauer. Pero pag nag sila sa Poland, walang violation. Pag-pay-hall silang may violation pa rin ho kung ipinasa po nila sa curb buyer yung driver, drivers pa. Kasi hindi po allow po yun. Sir, parang klaro ho yun na, yung nangyari. Bantayan po namin yan. Uh, yes, sir. Meron po kaming report na isasubmit po, consolidated na along with the Dole. The ongoing uh, po kasi investigation, di ba, uh, sir? How long are we talking about here? What, what's the timeline to, to finish the investigation? I think it would be Dole who will be consolidating it and submitting it, the report to... No, because to you will be submitting the investigation. It's not Dole investigating, it's POEA, right? Uh, it, it is an inter interagency okay. kasi, so okay. uh, we are ready to put it in. Can we give ano lang, uh, what, what time frame are we looking at? Uh, I cannot give a specific time frame, but I can describe what is being done and what needs to be done. Uh, we have suspended, uh, POA has suspended the Philippine Recruitment Agency and also the Foreign Recruitment Agency. Uh, so they cannot recruit, deploy. That is a huge penalty, actually. They will lose millions because of this. So we expect that they will address this. Once what, it is addressed... What, when you say millions, what, what figures are we talking about here? Ang, ang isa pong agency, pag tumigil na mag-recruit, eh, mawawala ng million-million. Eh. So the opportunity cost is really enough uh, penalty for them to, to fix these things. We will also look into the... Uh, the practice of uh, recruiting and deploying for a specific place and then uh, making them work in another jurisdiction. Actually, the, the correct procedure should be that the contract should be re re accredited again uh, by the polo uh, so that when they are deployed to another jurisdiction, the conditions, the terms and conditions are in accord with uh, the requirements of the place of work. Kasi Yusek, parang yung trabaho nila, parang seaman din eh, mm. na palipat-lipat sila. Opo. We talk about it, mobile. Eh. Mo mobile yung, yung, yung job description ng mga drivers. Yeah. Uh, ang mahalaga po. Tsaka, 
Kasi kung ganun lang, hindi dapat hindi na tayo mag-deploy ng drivers. Kasi, di ba, yun na yung magiging nature ng trabaho nila na iikot sila. Uh, in, uh, let me uh, describe an analogy. Dito po sa Pilipinas, kung nagtatrabaho ka halimbawa sa NCR at lumipat ka sa ibang regions na mas mababang wage, dapat dala mo yung wage ng NCR. Uh -huh. y yung mga ganun concepts. So, kung ikaw nagtatrabaho sa law, Uh, level na income sa isang, pag umakit siya, dapat po, alam mo sa Denmark sila, dapat itaas din yung, kasi po, ang standard of living doon sa place of work ay mataas. Kaya kung kinakalkula yung, at saka iba-iba ang minimum wage eh, sa, sa Geneva, mga 1,300 uh, francs, malaki po yun. Sa Kwan naman, uh, mga 1,000 sa Brussels. So, dapat po, pag lumipat doon, uh, dala nila yon. Ang problema lang sa kanila, kasi kung ito yung Europe, kung biyabiyay sila from state to state. So, magiging ano yan, uh, focal niyan is yung original na kumuha sa kanila. Opo, ay kung mababa ho yun. Kahit tapos, napupunta sila sa ibang bansa, is that the, the, the policy? Kahit na, kunyari, oh, ang kumuha nga talaga sa Poland, dahil mababa hmm. yung uh, batas nila doon, yung minimum wage nila compared to Denmark, pero mas madalas ang punta nila ng Denmark or other countries, legal pa rin po ba na ang sinusweldo nila ay... But, una una po, yung, uh, kung ano yung nakalagay sa job order, dapat masunod yon. Kung sinabing dito kayo magda-drive doon at gano'n ang sweldo. Pero in terms of equity, justice, and standards, pagka lumipat sila sa isang state na mataas ang cost of living, dapat may corresponding adjustment. But in practice, that has to be verified again accredited uh, the whole job order and contract should be verified and if it's below standards the the poll will will not approve it pero kung may adjust nila pwedeng ma so I'm, i'm saying that that's the only way that this can be regulated kasi mahirap po i-monitor pagka naandun na sila nung ako yung nasa Brussels nagreklamo yung mga nasa barko at pinuntahan ko Uh, bago masettle, nakalipat na ho sila ng ibang lugar. And then I was told na nasettle na. Uh, but that, that's how difficult it is. I was based in Brussels. I had to go to uh, Dunkirk uh, and, and, and try to settle it. So it's difficult, but uh, it can be done. Uh, the, the international labor organizations are actually helping. Sila ang mas malawak ang network and, and they tinitimbrihan kami kung merong mga ganong pagkakatal. Ito ang social dumping na sa transportation sector in Europe. Sa mga, I, I tried to, to, to look around and do some research. It's been around eh, for, for quite some time. Ito ba? Pero sa atin ba itong nangyari? Is this our, the first time na, na nagkaroon tayo ng ganitong uh, incident uh, in the past years uh, sa DFA and the DOA? Ngay ngayon lang po ba ito? Nakaraang taon ba may ganito na reports? Actually, sir, this is the first time on our, on our part. Uh, Your Honor, we, we heard about it first time August of this year. Um, there's a suspicion that there's a syndicate because um, the, the Filipino drivers, they will subscribe to a lower pay compared to their counterparts because if it's a citizen of the EU, they will get at least 3,400 euros. So I think that's why the unions are also... Um, are also complaining because uh, this is cheap labor that's uh, coming in. By the way, Your Honor, for Saudi Arabia, the recruiter is also a Filipino. I can give you the name later. Um, and also an, a Russian or Belarusian citizen. And their agency is Global Citizens Incorporated. Wag lang din po ako yung sa committee. Baka pwede rin yung POEA. Filipino pala yung recruiter. Yes, Your Honor. Oh. Uh, Ma'am, paano, ano, paano na-determine, for instance, in this particular case, uh, when would you say na you would recommend or advise POEA to impose deployment ban on this specific uh, occupation in Europe? Kasi kayo, kayo na nga po yung nagsasabi kanina, um, even our kababayans, ayaw nilang umuwi kahit na ganun yung situation. 
Your Honor, the problem is they don't want to talk to the embassy. They prefer to talk to the union. So they were also being offered by IOM, International Organization for Migration, uh, to be repatriated and have a reintegration. But they refuse because um, even if they're being paid with low salaries in Europe, it's better than coming home. So for in their opinion, so um, are actually some of them already, what they want from us is just to help them renegotiate their contracts. So they just want a higher pay. In fact, uh, we had the report from Berlin that among the 30 foreign truck drivers, 22 have returned to work because they got 1,300 euros. But still, from a uh, couple ka level na siya ng mga Actually, Eastern it's still European. not yet mame, eh, mababa pa rin eh. But eight did not return to work and are asking for a higher pay. So, um, as of now, it's like the Philippine government has no more control over what, uh, how much they're getting. But they want to do things on their own. So, they want to renegotiate their contracts. That's why they don't, they're also quite worried in talking to the, the embassies. But at least now, four embassy, four posts are really trying to reach out to them. Although there's a hesitance. Eh. I think natatakot sila na iuwi namin sila kasi ayaw talaga nilang umuwi. Kuwarmen natin, o, oh, di ba, pagdating nila sa bansa, they are, uh, ang orientation natin, they require natin na pumunta sa DFA, uh, dun sa bansa, ano, in case may problema or anything. Yun ang ba ang una, number one, or it depends pa rin? Um, Your Honor, uh, meron po tayong programa naman for the integration, uh, and that's all open, not only to the workers here in Denmark, but all other distressed Filipinos who are coming home. Um, but as uh, Yusek Ariola mentioned, our challenge in uh, in repatriating the workers is it has to be voluntary. They should consent. And uh, if they refuse to uh, be repatriated, there's really nothing that we can do um, except to help their families here in case they ask for help. Ang, ang, ang phenomenon po kasi, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Madam Senator, in Europe, our challenge in Europe is that most of the migrants who go to Europe would like to assimilate in that country. You know? uh, our reintegration program is really geared towards countries, the third world and other types of countries. But if it's a first world country, usually it's a, the workers there want to assimilate rather than come back. Uh, question, anong status ng work permit nila dun sa host country? For example, ito, di ba, um, I assume yung work permit nila is for Poland. So, paano sila nagtatrabaho sa Denmark? Eh, wala naman silang work, work permit sa Denmark. Uh, ah, dahil EU. So, ang ano nila, work permit nila is EU, EU work permit visa. Oh. And originally, they would prefer Poland dahil yun yung mas pinakamurang uh, okay, So, technically, wala permission. silang violation dun sa host country sila kasi yung visa nila, visa nila is valid. So, I think that so, I think that's yeah. another challenge for us. By law, sell high ng laborer. I, I, I mean, ako, I, I, ang bottom line ho dito, how we'd be able to protect our kababayan sa'yo, eh, no? Uh, when it comes to monitoring, baka pwedeng bigyan nyo kami ng idea, bigyan nyo kami ng suggestion how we will be able to strengthen our system in monitoring them. Kasi alam lang namin yung challenges na ito nga, Sa, Den sa Poland ang, ang, ang original, pero doon nag stay sa Denmark. Tapos, uh, yung, yung working conditions nila, ang sama din. Siguro, Yusek, ano ba? Is there a need to negotiate with EU na pag yung empleyado na, yung Filipino workers, kung saan sila ma-assign, they should follow yung rate nung, or whichever is higher, katulad nung yung policy natin dito sa Pilipinas. Kaya mo bang i-ano yan? The the form of regulation would primarily be uh, accrediting uh, recruitment agencies here and, and abroad if we have a poor law. But I think the more important part is to engage in is, uh, a bilateral agreement and if possible a multilateral agreement with, with EU. Because the moment we are able to agree on that, then these standards will apply. Uh, insurance, medical, and then a, a increase in salary. What they're negotiating for is an increase in salary over three years. 
that is not a one-time, one-contract uh, issue. It is a something to do with a, a three-year. It, it's almost like collective bargaining. In other words, they're ab they are willing to accept 10030 if by next year it will be 13 and then 15. But if this becomes part of uh, a bilateral agreement, then those issues would actually be addressed. And if there are violations, there is a, an opportunity to, uh, you know, demand for for uh, redress. But I suggest. Well, and are we going towards that direction? Well, we have bilateral agreements, and those standards are actually discussed. Even salaries, uh, there are specific uh, minimum salaries. In fact, uh, so among it's in place right uh, now, or still uh, uh, working agreement. Working. Uh, I refer, for example, in in the Middle East, we have certain uh, standards. It Pero dito in sa Europe, Europe. Europe oh, yung what? Kasi the mechanics are there na one one. Ang naggo-govern po dyan yung, yung job contract, yung uh, job order mismo. And once we see that the job uh, order is, in, is, is appropriate, then we accredit the job order, then they can begin uh, recruiting. So the source of all the relationship would be the, the job order. Kung mababaho yun, we reject. Uh, so, but it's very difficult to enforce even uh, the job order. The, the only ready tool is for us to suspend the agencies. Pag sinuspend mo na agency, biglang gagalaw yan eh. Ganun ang experience namin. Opo. Ma'am, kanina binanggit nyo yung 500 truck drivers. Yeah, ito po, bet po ng DFA po ito or uh, was this given also by... Uh, kasi if I'm not mistaken, yung Polish Union, uh, Labor Union, yung 3F, was uh, the one uh, who provided DFA yung information sa Padberg. Yeah. Um, Your Honor, this is the estimate of the four posts, uh, Warsaw, Poland, Hague, Netherlands, o Oslo, Norway, and Berlin, Germany. But we, uh, so far, only four posts now are moving, but we're trying to, to look at Italy, um, France, and all the other countries because um, so far, um, in the drivers themselves are saying there are other Filipinos. Uh, and um, the thing is, the, there's also, uh, they don't also want to cooperate because they're afraid of the embassy because if, if they think if it's the embassy, they will be brought home. And the only thing they want from us <laughs> is... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, they, they only want us to help them renegotiate. So, um, actually, they just want us to provide them food for a, a couple of months because they want to con just to be able to work there. Um, our, the challenge here is, are we going to help them in that way? Because we do not, you know, we do not really promote foreign employment. That's in our law. And, um, but our citizens refuse to come home. And they are also in very bad, a very bad condition. Yeah, but so technically, if they are working, Hindi dapat wala rin silang work visa. So, hindi ba sila pwede i-deport nung no Actually, some country. of them are saying that they're victims of trafficking. So, they're being helped. So, actually, they're also taking advantage of the labor laws of Europe. Eh. Um, the, our only problem is if they're un really unwilling and, uh, and they don't want to cooperate with the embassy. So, they just want to, uh, they just want to stay in Europe because, of course, if, if you're already there, but the opportunities are don't endless. They, don't they uh, no, uh, show any surprise at all na, na hindi nila inasahan to, but they're experiencing it? I mean, I mean, before they, 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 they leave, you do uh, yung mga, uh, oh, yeah, under, under uh, RA 10801, di ba? Uh, uh, Alam nila yun, di ba? Mr. Chair, I think kung sumusweldo ko naman ng $1,000. I mean, tapos, uh, uh, Europe, uh, Europe, uh, Europe. What happened here, Senator Nancy, is that they, they went to Denmark na mas mataas yung uh, uh, Hindi, pero of living. Tapos no, but the thing is, sila. pag bumalik naman sila dito sa Pilipinas, wala naman magpapasweldo sa kanila ng 1,000 euros. Please, please, uh, you yes, I stayed in Europe as uh, the labor attaché. And my experience is that it is true they don't like to live. Because if they stay, for example, in Brussels for five years, the legitimate, this includes protection sa kanila, they will receive 800 euro every month even if they don't have work. 
the moment they become permanent residents, they get all the benefits of a developed so world. So they're also after the social benefits that yes. they can get from, from the EU countries. Yeah. And even if they, in fact, they are put to jail and they earn because they work, they're able to remit even if they are in jail. So, akala ho ng pamilya nila, kumikita pa sila, ang totoo nakakulong. Bakit bakit nakakulong may ano pa rin? Opo, pagka sila'y nagtrabaho sa kitchen, nagtrabaho sa paglilinis, they get a certain uh, sort of a salary. Why in jail? The, the, huh? the Filipino I, I used to monitor earned about 300 euros every month. So, pinadadala niya yung 200 euros sa bahay, that's about 18,000 pesos. So, akala ng pamilya nila, in other words, even in the most adverse condition, they are actually better off. Eh? And that they say, we just need to stay. We're just negotiating for better terms. And if we stay for a while, we might get permanent resident status. They are totally protected because of that. Uh, din tayo mga welfare officers no? in Europe. Um, uh, Mr. Chair, we only have, um, we, we have the polo cannot work independently of the embassy or the consulate. So where there's an embassy or consulate, that's where we can locate ourselves. Uh, in this case, uh, as uh, Yusek Ariola said, we only have uh, four posts that are working on this matter. And we, is uh, Geneva, Mr. Chair, and uh, we don't have a welfare officer in Geneva, so it's just a laborer attache in Geneva. Wala ho ba sa proposal niyo for next year's budget to open additional posts? Yung Berlin po nabuksan na. Pero kasi ako yung karanasan ko sa Brussels, pati yung uh, France, one and a half hours, yung Netherlands, 1.45, Luxembourg is about two hours. So pagkaunaan doon, mas madaling, ma pati yung problema sa ibang bansa, ako, ako ang nag -handle. I think Brussels post is should be revived because of, of uh, these problems. In particular case, oh, what, 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 what have you and uh, uh, you know, uh, in this particular case of uh, trackers in sa, sa Europe, the oh. yung, families yes. are Mr. Chair, yes. Uh, uh, I just want to update you, Mr. Chair, Madam yes, Senator. Uh, the families of their families, we have also gone to our family welfare officers in the region. We have also gone to the two uh, workers. One is si Dua, at yung isa pa po ng sa Region 10. Yung iba po, as we speak, uh, they are being visited by our family welfare officers. Um, and we are proposing to provide them with assistance should they seek the assistance of OWA for certain programs. Um, however, like I said, uh, Mr. Chair, the uh, issue really here is the worker themselves because we want to, as <laughs> we want to bring them home if they're willing to come home. Uh, but uh, obviously they would rather stay so but, but let's 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 walk the extra mile yes. an uh, proactive approach yes. na then to or, or solution I, to prevent yes. this from happening again yes, uh, Kasi it looks like itong ano nga yun, prime mover something mukhang, uh, i hope may may may, ma, may makita tayo dyan. actually chair one of the gaps uh, if you don't mind madam senator please, please. Uh, is our our main problem with the uh, OWA really is dealing with the uh, third country uh, transit because these are really the undocumented workers. These fall through the cracks. These people, when they travel, they're coming from a third country, meaning they've been deployed legally to a second country, but are recruited illegally to work in a third country. So uh, they fall through the cracks. We don't know where they are. The only time that the government will even know is when they have a problem already. So, so ito yung Saudi. Uh, yung, po, I think even no, but the 100 na, di ba, one, yung 59 United Prime Movers and then 100 undocumented. Ito, I guess most of them galing Saudi. May possibility Tapos din nila sa Poland. May possibility po na third country recruitment. And pag ganun, wala na tayong control. We can't even pros uh, prosecute yung nag-recruit sa kanila sa Saudi. Opo. Ma'am, doon sa 500 ninyo, hindi Prime Mover yan. Iba, iba yan. We still have to find out, uh, Your Honor, because um, actually now, since alerted na sila, ayaw na nilang doon magpakita. But um, the problem is, uh, we also do not have an embassy of Poland here in the Philippines. So all the visas are processed in Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur. So it's also possible that some people are, you know, not 
I mean, not be recruited here. They yeah, they can go to because you have uh, because of ASEAN, you can go directly to Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Then you know, from there, you can be recruited. So you don't really know wh where they are all coming from. But there is a possibility that if there are some from Saudi Arabia, some can be recruited. Or pwede din na tourist visa. Yes, sir, owner. Tapos pagdating don, sa kana lang naga apply. Para dito din. May ano lang po no. Uh, fresh na fresh sa FB Live. Mayroon po na, na, na question dito from, 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 from Europe. Uh, is it true that the DFA ambassador ang nag-renegotiate ng contract uh, doon sa mga drivers? Kasi po, it looks like hindi kami nakonsulta. I don't know kung, kung, kung driver po ito. No? From 15 Danish crown to 20 Danish crown, whereas 100 Danish crown ang rate po per hour. Can we check on this lang, ma'am? Uh, your, your Honor, just to to, uh, to reassure you that the, the ambassadors don't renegotiate the contracts because that's, uh, but uh, we'll, we'll check. Cause we, we don't really know which ambassador. Well, no, they don't have, uh, no, uh, DFA ambassador, no, on sa Denmark po. Uh, it looks like, wala, no? wala, wala pong ganun, no? There's no such thing. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Before I do the closing remarks, you want to say something? <coughs> Please. Yeah, parang yung problema ho dito sa drivers, parang walang malino na solution. <laughs> I think you just have to... Hindi, kasi tech, di ba, parang you can't renegotiate kasi parang uh, kinukonsinti niyo yung mali. But at the same time, hindi naman natin sila pwedeng pabayaan doon. So... So, hindi ko alam kung... <laughs> experience po namin, kailan puntahan mo para malaman mo kung ano talaga nangyayari. Kasi minsan, grabe na rin eh, lalo na sa barko, hindi nyo alam yun. We have to be there. Uh, well, thank you. Ngayon pong araw na to, napatunayan po natin kung gaano po kahalaga, uh, gaano po talaga ka-hospitable tayong mga Pilipino. Pero yung Filipino hospitality na kinikilala sa buong mundo, eh masyado naman po yata natin siniseryoso. Kasi kung uh, banyaga ka, lalo na kung ikaw ay Chinese national at gusto mo pumasok at magtrabaho dito sa Pilipinas, ang initial requirement, pumunta ka lang dito, meron palang pwedeng uh, tourist visa ka agad na pag, uh, uh, pag land mo palang, pwede na. At di po, ba, kapag may bisita tayo, Ano ba yung laging sinasabi natin sa kanila? Sige, feel at home. Hanggat gusto mo magstay ka, bukas ang aming tahanan. Um, nabanggit ko po ito kasi ang nangyayari, bibigyan po pala natin ng uh, special work permits. At nagulat po ako dito ha, sa binanggit kanina ng BI kahit walang AEPs. Naalala ko po yung uh, palaging sinasabi ng aking uh, lola, si inang nena. Pinatuloy mo na ninakawan ka ba? Um, lahat po tayo dito, for sure, nakaranas ng uh, mag-apply ng visa abroad. Korea man, Japan, Shenzhen visa, UK visa, at ang unang uh, ipapagawa po sa'yo, alamin mo muna kung anong visa type mo. Kapag tourist ka, tourist ka lang. Ibabalandra pa nila sa mukha mo yung warning na you cannot engage in any employment sa bansang papasyalan mo. Mahigpit po sila sa working uh, visas. Klarong-klaro po ito. Uh, itong mga Chinese nationals, foreign nationals, ninanakawan po ng trabaho ang ating mga kababayang Pilipino. Hinaagawan na nga po ng tirahan at kinukupitan ng oportunidad ang ating mga kababayan. And the numbers don't lie. As confirmed by uh, Yusik Lagunsad kanina, there's an upward trend in the arrival of Chinese nationals. That's why we need a regulation on the employment of foreign nationals to ensure po, to ensure that jobs here in the country are by and large for the Filipino workers. Ang nakasad po sa ating konstitusyon, klaro naman, bigyan ng preferential treatment ang ating mga manggagawang Pilipino. Kung sinasabi po ng BI o Bureau of Immigration na hindi karamihan ang mga Pilipino na marunong magmandarin, and ano po ang ginagawa ng ating mga language skills institute na nakakalat sa buong bansa. At marami po dito, TESDA, 
directly being supervised. Kaya po nating mag-train ng skills. Wala namang hindi kakayanin ang mga Pilipino. Kaya nga po in demand ang mga Filipino workers kahit sa panig ng mundo. Mukhang ang isa sa pinagmumulan ng problema ay ang proseso ng pagbibigay ng AEPs ng DOLE at ang labor market test na idinadaan lang sa publication, sa newspaper o general circulation. I think we can do better than that. Dito naman po sa Pogo, tama po ang suwestyon ni Senator Grace po na i-require yung understudy para eventually may balik na sa mga Pilipino ang mga trabaho pinapahiram natin sa kanila ngayon. But again, ito yung mga legal. Yung mga illegal, ang mali, kahit balibalig na rin, mali pa rin. Uulitin ko po ang paniniwala natin na hindi dapat lumagana pa ang sugal at lalo na pong hindi dapat na ang bangka pa mismo ng sugalan dito sa Pilipinas ay mismong gobyerno. Tayo lang po yung ganitong may setup. Sayang, uh, sana marinig po ulit ng mga kaibigan natin sa Paggor. Tayo na yung regulator, tayo pa yung bankero. Wala hong ganun sa ibang bansa, tayo lang. Nabanggit ko po yan kasi ang paghahanap natin ng oportunidad para sa mga Pilipino, may sangkap po itong pagsisikap at pagpapaunlad ng sarili. Pero ang sugal, ang itinuturo po niyan, umasa tayo sa swerte. Let's depend on the game of chance. In sum, sa issue ng illegal Chinese workers at iba pang mga illegal foreign na national workers, klarong may kapabayaan sa parte ng ating mga ehensya na protektahan ng trabaho para sa ating mga kapwa Pilipino at sa ating mga OFWs. Panghuli po, gusto ko lang pong idagdag kung bakit napaka-importante matugunan ang social dumping na bumibiktima sa mga Pilipino truck drivers. Nagbukas po kasi ng pinto ang Poland at iba pang bansa sa Europa, nandiyan ang Germany, Czech Republic, Norway, etc. Para sa mga Filipino workers, lalo na sa information technology, construction, manufacturing, etc. At kinumpirma po yan sa atin mismo ng Philippine Association of Service Exporters Incorporated or PASE. So sana po, uh, bago magtuloy-tuloy ito, masiguro din natin na mabuprotektahan natin ang ating mga kababayan. Sa inyo po lahat, sa ating mga resource persons and guests, taos pusong pasasalamat at uh, sa ating uh, kaibigan senador na laging uh, present, perfect attendance na sa Committee on Labor. Maraming salamat, Senator Nancy Binay. Kaya maganda Christmas gift ko sa iyo dapat. <laughs> Kaya nga ako campaign manager mo eh. Enough na yun. Anyway, this uh, committee uh, hearing is now uh, adjourned. At uh, muli, maraming salamat po at magandang uh, hapon po sa inyo lahat. Thank you. God bless us all. Let me remind po yung submission ng reports and uh, data. Thank you. Please.